Knowledge of the Flare is not exclusively held by Candela Obscura. There are many in the Fairlands who try to exploit the magical bleed we work to quell. In the gilded halls of the Varnish, the wealthy gather to celebrate their collected avarice and gluttony. But beneath their revels, sinister plots cast shadows of the past onto the present. When New Fair's most powerful find themselves in competition, it is those who work in their shadows that suffer the consequences. The Circle of the Crimson Mirror, assignment number 4316, The Gilded Graveyard. This episode of Candela Obscura is brought to you by our partner, Demiplane, creators of Candela Obscura Nexus. Whether you're a master storyteller or a curious explorer, Demiplane's platform equips you with the tools to deep dive into any assignment. You can unlock full access to the Nexus following the purchase of the Candela Obscura digital rulebook. Lightkeepers and players alike can begin their next investigation at candelaobscuranexus.com. Use code CANDELA for a 20% discount on your gateway into the unknown. Stay with us for more from Demiplane during the break. The Candela Obscura Core Rulebook has arrived and is ready for you to dive into. Visit DarringtonPress.com slash Candela to learn more. You want to give up? I can see it in your faces. And uh, I get it. I do, I've been there. <laughs> You're asking yourselves, why on earth did I choose to do this, to go stick in my nose in places it's better to steer clear of? <sighs> the totter grass of all places, coming here. And that's valid. It's a harsh fucking world. You can sometimes feel like you're mad doing the things we do for Candela. Monsters of this world have come looking for us without ever lifting a finger. So why should we be seeking them out, right? No one, not me, not anybody would judge you for walking away. Except, I know why you showed up to begin with. You're doing it for yourselves, sure. But you're doing it for all of them, too. For the people you've already lost. And for everybody else who stands to lose just as bad. We do this because we owe them. What we do is taking a stand. We're not just throwing up our hands and saying, well, what can you do? That's just how it is. We want something better. For Tottergrass. West Eckland. Your homes. Mine. For every person under the sun. And for fuck's sake, all that pain's gotta be good for something. You can let it overwhelm you. Or you can take hold of it and use it for something. Use it to make the world better. 
and yourselves better for it. Anyways. Grimoria. Edgar. Leo. Declan Murphy lies before you on a plain brass bed, unmoving, draped in perfect white sheets. You're staring at him through a large round window in an adjacent room. He lies still, his chest rising and falling slowly. His shoulder, neck and face misshapen and mottled crusted over in growth as white as the tiles that surround him here. You three now stand within the twisting walls of the fourth Pharos, Candela Obscura's lighthouse stronghold that resides beyond the mundane world, floating somewhere in the flare. With you now are your lightkeeper, Zora, and another doctor, Shorter man, about five feet, bespectacled, bald, wearing slacks and a white shirt with the sleeves rolled up and a smock tied back behind his waist. This is Dr. Hector Aguilar. Dr. Lycoris, you have been working with him for the better part of a week. I am sorry. Uh, he's fallen into a coma. While you all were sleeping, his uh, respiratory functions have been improving somewhat, but right now we are concerned most about brain inflammation. We can't know more without going in. Well, the only positive change is that the level of bleed we've been monitoring on Mr. Murphy has actually been dropping. Dr. Lycoris, I think you should step away for the time being. Your help has been appreciated, but if we are not prepared to put him under the knife, I really think it best you should step away from a case so personal to you, in my opinion. I understand. Can I ask why, why are we not prepared to operate? Well, we don't know enough about what we're dealing with. I'm a little nervous of making matters worse, Zora Manning uh, interrupts. Yes, well, we are also uh, hoping to get word from Declan's other circle to learn something more about the circumstances of this affliction or whatever it is. Uh, they've been away on their current assignment, but are due back any day now. So for the moment, we feel it is better to wait, at least for now. The good news is, I'd like us all to swing by and find Malcolm this morning. We'd like to send you all home. Keep us updated if anything changes. Of course. Of course, but right now, I think it best you all get back to your lives in New Fair. It's been a week, I'm sure that there are logistical problems for you at home. And since you all seem to be in good health, welcome as well. For now, we trust you all to look after your own. You of the Crimson Mirror. Come. We can pick this up with Malcolm. You leave Declan Murphy in this isolation chamber within the Fourth Pharaohs and step out into a long hallway. Even though you've been here a week, even though you've become accustomed to it, it never 
The jarringness of this place never goes away, and as you walk down a long, curving hall, your view of it imperceptibly hmm. rotates, spins. Perspective is funny here. You make your way down a long hallway. At a certain point, you see a door, one of many doors, running down both sides of this hallway. One opens, and a man in a peacoat and a beard quickly and in a huff just storms across the hallway ahead of you, closing the door behind him, opening one across the way, and disappears. Hmm. You continue on. A certain point, crossing a, an actual screen on the wall that, uh, as a woman in a dark blue robe with a wide, flat belt tied around uh, her back, and she's wearing sandaled feet, um, slides that screen out of the way, and as you're passing, you see three more people dressed similarly um, in a, a wooden room with a, a wide, immaculate mat on the floor and a low, squat table. And in the middle of the table, a peacock stands, and there is a ring of little glass crystal beads placed around the bird. Three people and the woman opening the screen look up as you pass, nod. And then the woman who was in the hallway with you slides the screen, and you travel on for several minutes. You eventually arrive at a door. Zora stands before it and reaches her hand out to the knob. She twiddles her fingers for a second and waits, and then turns it, and you step in. And in a similar room to the one you came from, you find Malcolm. Malcolm, you've spent the last week in an isolated hospital room here in the Fourth Pharos. You've been run through a barrage of tests every one of those days, as Edgar and the medical staff here within the flare have tried to ascertain what, if anything, has happened to you, as well as tending to that knife wound you acquired on Serenity. Opinions have been tentative, to be sure. Every day the mantra has been the same. Let's see where we are tomorrow. There's a knock outside, and then you see Azora and your friends enter the chamber, the antechamber. And you see them through a large round window, which is convex, and the image of them is skewed. They seem, you know how close they are, but they seem so much farther away, just barely rotating in space in your view. Like so much of the pharaohs. Zora closes the door behind them. Hello, Malcolm. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Well, I've stopped feeling like a human pincushion. Now I'm feeling like a human band-aid, but I'm doing good. At least you're human. <laughs> For now. <laughs> now, I'm sure Dr. Aguilar and Edgar here have been taking good care of you. Oh, they have, they have, they have. They've seen every inch of my body. I'm sure you'll never forget that, will you, Edgar? <laughs> How are your ribs? <clears throat> there. It's a little sore. It's better. I can actually cough without feeling a little bit of pain. It's a little sore now, but it's good. It's healing quicker than I thought it would. It's good to hear. Now, I have what I hope you will feel is some good news for you. You've yeah. been given the okay to leave. Oh, oh. wonderful. Not sure if I want to. I'm a little scared to go outside after all. <laughs> well, we can't put you up forever, and honestly, your circle will monitor you if we put our trust in them. Just if you could stay in town. Of course. We'd appreciate it. I'll be over at the Glass Cat getting mended. <laughs> of course. Come for the blushes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, quite. Uh, for the moment, please, just return to your day-to-day -day lives. We will be in touch. Uh, Mr. Murphy is not doing as well as you, I'm afraid. What's his prognosis? Zora opens her mouth to speak for a second, but catches herself, and... Um, it's that bad, huh? You can tell that she is on the verge of tears a bit. He's asleep for now. 
I, I don't know if, if Declan and never mentioned this, but um, I was in his first circle when he was a much younger man, shortly before I retired from field work myself. So I have to admit, this feels a little more personal than these moments sometimes can. But we put our faith in each other, and I put my faith in you. Just like I know he would put his faith in you. And we will hope for the best. I was telling the others, um, once the circle of the worm returns from their latest work, down in Old Fair. We're hoping they have any information. We haven't spoken to them either in, you know, almost two weeks. But we expect them back soon, so. Do they think what has attached himself to Malcolm, I mean to Malcolm, to Declan, is what's attached to me, or what I could have breathed in with what that was blown in my face, or? Quite possibly. Oh, delightful. Sh sure he's all right, Doctor. Seems a little out of sorts still. What do you think, Edgar? Anything you can detect inside me? From this distance? No. Well, I mean from a week of examination. You seem as fine as you're... You seem to be healing normally. Mm. This code freak looked terrible. Everything else... There's no sign of anything else happening to you. So either this thing is very insidious and subtle, or you're fine. 50-50. Guess we'll find out one way or another, will we? If I can slide into the uh, game mechanics lane for a second, I will just let everyone know watching at home that before we started uh, rolling today, we did um, take advantage of our circle resources. So people are doing a little better than they were when we last saw them on the Island of Serenity. Leo, you took Stitch and Train. Mm -hmm. Malcolm took a Stitch and a Train. I sure did. Grimoria took Refresh and Train, and Edgar, you took Refresh and Train. So everyone hopped Indeed. on board the train. <laughs> <laughs> and now back into the full ferries. All right, well, I have a lot of paperwork to work through today, so um, if you will, let me escort you back home. She walks to the door separating these two rooms, and um, other than food being delivered and doctors coming in to stick you with needles and take your blood, uh, Zora opens the door. Mr. Trills, <laughs> if you will. Ah, uh, here we go. <sighs> you leave solitary confinement for the first time in a week and begin to move down this long, curving, slowly rotating hallway, floating in the flare. You walk for a good 15 minutes in silence, just footsteps clicking down this hallway, and eventually she stops and stands in front of a door and reaches out her hand to open it. But before she can, it actually opens up into the hallway and a blast of icy cold air spills into the room and a woman with a parka and goggles lifted up over her eyes comes walking in and her breath steams and she looks around at all of you. Oh, I I'm sorry, uh, wrong door. She shuts behind her. <sighs> Very silly person. <laughs> One moment. She waits a beat, turns the knob and opens the door. And now, instead of the airplane hangar somewhere in the world that you just saw. Is it Amelia Earhart? You instead <laughs> see Leo Amicus's flat in the Redland. Now, Leo, I could describe uh, this apartment, mm. but I think you're better equipped and I would really love to hear it. Oh boy, okay, let's, let's begin at the beginning. Uh, Leo's apartment is uh, in the Red Lamp District. It's on the second floor of uh, 802 uh, Tivalry Lane. Um, it's one of those um, pie-shaped buildings, a very, very thin wedge. Um, it, it's a 
right above a coffee shop, since the, which is at the bottom floor of the, uh, of the building, called the Endless Well. Um, his apartment is very opulent. Uh, it's cluttered, uh, but cluttered with impeccable taste. Uh, the the uh, apartment itself, if it we're empty, is uh, Art Nouveau in design. It's got detailing and painted edges all over the ceiling and walls. Uh, it's packed with photographs on the wall and a very well curated collection of local artists uh, in the, uh, um, what would I say, impressionist style quite a bit. Um, it's quite a bit. There, most of the windows, most of them have uh, stained glass in them, including a uh, central large round window in the living room that really dominates the room quite seriously with the lights and color of the, of the red light uh, <laughs> gleaming through it. Um, there's beautiful velvet curtains around it, with, kind of draped in an asymmetrical, organic style. Um, expensive rugs, beautiful glass lamps in every room. Uh, he owns, among other things, a, a record player, a radio, um, some beautiful small music boxes, uh, a uh, um, wax cylinder player, uh, anything, anything of, of that sort. He's got a grandfather clock because you must. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, um, each surface and each shelf is filled with oddities, um, detailing less of the of the memento mori of, of a lot of people who are part of Candela, and more of of a, of a love of opulence, a love of of travel, of seeing what one can and. Uh, of adventure and taste. Mm. Um, but most striking in there is uh, a vanity table in the living room, uh, which has a beautiful big uh, mirror, except the mirror glass itself is crimson red. Mm. Um, and it is sitting precisely opposite to uh, Leo's bedroom door, which uh, is he usually keeps closed because there are, there are areas of the of the apartment that are very messy on occasion. Uh, next to the door is a small round uh, uh, table, almost almost a, a plant table, but it's got a, a nice vase of fresh flowers and a little silver tray. And at the moment, um, since wasn't expecting company at the moment, instead of his normal dining room table, he's got a couple couches and some chairs set around for company. Um, it is a very comfortable bohemian reality. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome in. We are we are actually stepping in oddly from the bedroom door, which is strange. Oh. Not the front. And as you enter and see this red tinged mirror across from you, you can see yourselves obviously and Zora in the hallway slowly rotating behind in the fourth pharos. Uh, before leaving you, Zora with her shoe, she sort of knocks with her toes on a little crate next to the table. Uh, Leo, um, the vintage I uh, mentioned, I've left you a couple of bottles. Cheers to being home, darling. Thank you, thank you very much. This will be very useful in the coming hours. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be in touch for now to get a hold of me. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. But you get some rest as well, Zora. No rest for the wicked. All right. Enjoy the sunshine. Get back to your lives. Try at least. She shuts the door. And now the mirror just reflects Leo's bedroom door. And those bottles, by the way, there's three of them in a, in a small crate. And the uh, labels on them are in a language that you do not read or do not recognize. Oh, thank God, that's fucking over. And I go and grab one of the bottles, immediately move to the to the little uh, table with all of the necessary uh, tools for this sort of work. <laughs> Quickly pop open the bottle, I'm barely looking at it, pouring glasses. Yes, 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 you don't have a choice. That's all right. Here we go, if you don't want it, I'll drink yours. <sighs> and I just collapse in the bloody couch. Well, <sighs> one little oh. nipper before I leave. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Cheers, Edgar. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's good. So you find yourselves spit out the other end of a very traumatic week and are home in New Fair. It is quite a few days past the time when multiple people 
you might be the exception to this, Leo. We're expecting you home. So there may be some difficulty upon impact. But it is hard not to savor the moment and the little nipper here in this opulent retreat. Leo's home, your chapter house, the place where you meet at least once a month to discuss your work. And it is hard to know what to do. Well, um, I think I have to get going. But um, I look forward to regrouping um, Mr. Amicus, Mr. Trills, mm. Dr. Lycoris. Um Thank you. Takes another little nipper, and she's going to try to hail a streetcar or whatever they have available. Sure. The, the door's the always open. <clears throat> Just please take advantage. You make your way downstairs, you. head off, and find your way to a trolley car. A <laughs> streetcar, yeah, trolley car. Ride off. Um, would you like to go somewhere directly at the moment? Yes, I would like to go to my home and work a place of employment in the Eve mm -hmm. neighborhood. Um, and yeah, I think I've, I've been, I've gotten as, uh, as much as I can as far as uh, flexibility from my employers. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm worried about their reaction and right. probably need to get back. You spend the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes returning to the eaves where the Fogs, Oliver and Cynthia Fogg, have their um, curio and curiosity um, dealings from their home. Uh, we find you eventually at the steps of the four-story townhouse owned by the Fogs, your employers, your wards, to a degree. Yes. After they took you in, after the war. And when they brought you in, originally it felt like a kindness or a blessing. You quickly realized the strings attached to that invitation, and they have kept you hard at work here. And the work has been unique. Mm. The townhouse is perched along one of Old Fair's many surviving ancient rooftops. The fogs aren't uh, wealthy enough for any of the real estate along the massive Old Fair and Archway that runs through the center of the eaves. But the fogs and their new money are at least successful enough to have a good view of the city's elites. You pause here, Grimoria, hesitant to enter for obvious reasons. It's been several days past your promised return now. You're unsure of the welcome you'll receive. And as you reach your hand out to open the door, it actually opens in front of you as Mrs. Fogg, seemingly heading out for the day, stops right in the doorframe, eyes bulging. Why, you! She grabs you by the wrist and just drags you inside through the inner hallway back into Oliver's study. Well, look who I found. I'm so sorry. I know I was due a few days ago, but um, I've come from a really interesting place, and I think that I finally cracked the code. I'm hearing voices, and I, I'm ready to go back to work. Oliver is standing there at his desk and he's got a bronze dagger that he's pulling bits of, of stuffing and, and packing off of. He's just pulled it out of a crate um, and he just stares at you apoplectic for a, a moment and says, three appointments, three, three appointments I'll make up, I'll you make missed. Up. Yes, I, I will. Do you have any idea how much money you might have cost us, Alma? Well, thank you for using my real name. Um, but I will say, and she pulls out her little uh, occult text, I've, I've got some new things I've learned that might prove even more lucrative in our next appointment, if you know what I mean. Pitch me, I'm listening. This well, is going to improve our business, how? Well, I did get my hands on, well, not quite my hands on, but a certain ancient set of bones, um, really ancient, from Old Fair, and I've got a kind of hieroglyphics that now I know how to use, and I don't know, I can maybe, well, I think it's better if I show you during an appointment. You have bones? No, I don't have the bones, but I've seen the bones and I've gotten very close, and I think that it might be impressive to, I don't know, 
sort of bring up in the next appointment. I think you won't be disappointed. All right, well, I'll consider it. What is that you have in your hand? Oh, uh, this is an, uh, uh, a knife out of antiquity. Well, that's exactly what I've been handling the last few days, antiquity. Well, here, get acquainted with it because we've got an appointment tomorrow and I need you to make up for everything we've lost this week. Great, we'll sell this and something else. Just find me something else that's ancient. Uh, Cynthia steps in. All right, all right. Go and get your face on, will you? All right? Not another word. And she ushers you back out to the foyer. And this is a townhouse. And um, she shoes you up to your room, which you have to go up the winding stairs until you get to a very small, single bedroom at the top of the entire building with one of those little arched over yeah. windows, a little round. Um, there's a, a round window, and there is a simple bed in here and a dresser and a desk. It's not fancy, there's not much in it. The few things you've been able to collect on your own, they don't pay you so well. There's a nice roof over your head. Um, sitting on your bed with this bronze dagger in your hand and you, and you take a moment to look at it. You've been doing this for a while for them mm -hmm. and um, looking at the, the grip of the hilt on this, you're seeing uh, a sort of a faded green leather thong wrapped around it, mm. like a string, right, a tie. And you know that you've seen this material before, twice before, you're fairly certain you're holding a forgery yeah. in your hands. So it'll have to be a bit when the customers arrive and you're expected to get in touch with the other side for their benefit. Yes. It's gonna be more of a theatrical presentation than yeah. anything. Set it down on the bed next to you and look at your desk where there is a little picture postcard of West Eklund. Yeah, I think she picks it up, looks at it. Maybe if she's got a small mirror or something, looks into it. And just briefly mourns her real self. And maybe through a tear or two, smiles and starts at her work, which is maybe fixing herself up, working on the story that she's going to weave the narrative of this dagger, and it doesn't allow herself too much indulgence. But Mr. Fogg's use of her real name was definitely maybe more traumatizing than the last few days. sit there for a good 15 or 20 minutes mulling all of this over in your mind. And uh, eventually, from the little heating grate that keeps this fourth floor room warm in the winter months, as you have on many past occasions, it's the way you heard about uh, the remains of Griffith in the first place. Um, you begin to hear a conversation bubble up from down below. Hmm. I need to talk to you. Why, what is it? Did you hear what she said? N no, what, I'm busy. She's talking about bones. Bones, she can't be talking about the artifact that Tamakai has. Can she? No, that's not possible. I don't know, it doesn't make sense, but... It doesn't make sense. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Uh, when we go to that masquerade at the end of the week, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna talk to Aroha. Doesn't make sense, but can't be. <laughs> I swear that guy is ruthless. Imagine. He sells half of a century's old corpse to some rube, then turns around and drives up a bidding frenzy over the rest of the bag of bones. 
He's double dipping on the same old fair and crone. Priceless. Who was the first buyer? No, no one will tell me. I don't know about what that kid said. Shit. Well, maybe we can dig, dig it out of someone at the auction. Tamakai means to show it off to a few of his upper crustiest guests in private, away from the rest of the auction. Probably in that overblown little museum he has on the third floor. Oh, I've got those busts ready to send over for the auction. Did, did you remember to pick up our masks for it? Fuck. That kid's more trouble than she's worth. She's, um, I think she's gonna write a note. Um to be sent off to Mr. Amicus, mm -hmm. and in some sort of code that they've, a candela code of sorts mm -hmm. or something, maybe um, requesting a, a, an impromptu sort of meeting regarding um, past events. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and like, I don't know if the, uh, the fogs are wealthy enough to have like a, like a, uh, you know, those people that like a butler or something that can go deliver it, or if she has her. to go do that, but she sends it off. Um, they are very well to do. I think yeah. you can get a messenger boy. Yeah, she run. sends it off and starts to, starts to plot a way to get herself um, invited to this masquerade. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she will try to convince the fogs that, you know, in light of her absence, maybe she can make this up to them and put on a great show if they, um, I don't know how she would do it, but just make herself available that evening, maybe, um, for free. And just say that she's desperate to make up for lost time. If there's an extra appointment or any extra things she can do to make it right, she would love to do that. Okay. Tell you what. Let's put a pin here. The letter has been sent off to Leo, the fogs are scurrying about the house, writing for tomorrow's appointment and preparing for a masquerade, an auction, speaking about, just so we're clear, the remains that you yeah, fucked up. <laughs> received, yeah. Yeah. And intimating that there, that Araha has more of right. this body. Okay. From there, I think we will shift over to you, Malcolm. I believe you wanted to make your way to the red lamp, mm. uh, out into the red lamp where you are currently, heading to the Glass Cat Casino? Yes, yep. I, uh, Malcolm, on his spare time, he is sort of like a hero for hire, uh, does odds and ends uh, within the red lamp uh, for those who aren't so well to do or can afford uh, the protection of, um, of other security forces who might be there, those who might not have the means. Uh, Malcolm, on a spare time, does side hustles. He's, he does he works as a bouncer at different clubs. But uh, his prominent location that he's the security is over at the Glass Cat, uh, ran by Miss Cordelia Gla Glask. Glask, sorry. Uh, Cordelia kind of took him in, gave him a room. Um, and so he kind of like, he likes to heal up there between missions. And so he's going back there to kind of get a little bit of rest, a little bit of, uh, of uh, attention, because it's sort of a house of house of fun. And uh, and he's going to make his presence known around the, the red lamp and let people know that he's back. And as you walk through the streets on the way there, you can't help but smile at the busy city streets, alive with people going about their days. After the Dandridge and Serenity, and the day spent sequestered in the Fourth Pharos, the bustle of New Fair is deeply welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty early as you head over, so all the lights and the D lights that Red Lamp turns on at night have yet to make their appearance, but busy all the same. You pass the usual storefronts, shops you see on the regular, the same buskers out on their corners making music. You cross that one street where you took a shot in the eye last year, breaking up a fight that ended up in a bar with the two guys sharing beers and helping him bury the ax. <laughs> you spot a few kids chattering and laughing, coming your way up the block. You know these kids very well. You see them all the time. They call out and wave at your approach. 
one kid throws up a hand for you as they pass by. You know the people of Red Lamp, and they know you. Halfway down the next block, you spot a, a disheveled older man you see from time to time sitting on the sidewalk, a tin cup held out to passers-by, and a faded old Halen military bag open beside him. You're pretty sure your family's company makes those bags. You watch him for a while, and all the people who walk past him without so much as a glance, like they can't see him, or won't. We'll go over there and put my regular one dollar in his cup that I give him on the daily. But this time it's a little bit more because I've missed a few days. He uses that to get food. Although he won't tell me because he's a proud army vet and he won't uh, let me know exactly how dire his situation is, but he always holds up a, 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 a steady, a steady, uh, steady chin and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a valiant gaze whenever I talk to him. Mother bless you. Mm, of course. You get something to eat today? Uh, yesterday. Yeah. Enough? You want me to go get you some food? How are you, how are you feeling right now? Oh, that's plenty of what you gave. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, well, I want you to make sure that you get yourself fed today. All right? Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, you know how I am. Here today, <laughs> gone for a couple. Anything happened when I was gone? Anything I should be aware of, or? Same old, same old. Mm. Kids getting up to trouble as kids do. <laughs> Especially those two little pesky mm. ones running about. Mm. Not when you're around. <laughs> you pass on uh, and pause outside of the glass cat, mm. looking at the red-hued lamps ready to be lit for the night soon. With everything that happened out at sea and on the island, where's Malcolm at? Right now, Malcolm is healing. And I've seen, I've, I've, with Candela, I've seen oddities before, and so I'm, I know that our missions can get out of hand. Uh, but this one obviously took a toll on me physically uh, mentally, I'm still wondering what I was, what blew in my face, but I, I'm trying to like not be consumed with that. Um, mostly thinking about Declan and about how he's doing, and just kind of uh, trying to trying to really come to reality with you know with what with what transpired and how how close I came to losing my life, basically. You. Um tickle in your nose and you sort of sniff twice and can't help but wonder if you just had a tickle in your nose or is it something more? You don't know. But stepping into the glass cat, uh, all the house lights are dim. It's not open for business really yet. You find Miss Glask here, Cordelia Glask, owner, proprietor, queen standing at the bar, and she is actually counting out bills uh, and sees you coming in. Oh. Got a little bit of that pile for me, Cordelia? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to put in a few hours <laughs> first. We've missed you a few nights. Is everything all right? Oh, peachy, peachy. You know how it is. A little, uh, life took me in another direction for a few days, but now I'm back, healing. Healing? Yeah, well, you know, I got a little, um, a little uh, bruise, shall we say. <laughs> but I'm feeling fine now, especially being back in here. How'd everything, how's everything going with business? Just getting bigger and bigger every month. I can see by that stack of cash you have there, aren't you? We do all right. <laughs> Are you sure you're good for tonight? We can always call Dutch or Grace. No, no, I think tonight will do me good. You know, it's nothing like getting back to it in order to get your mind off of things. Okay. Well. You don't have to bottle it up. We're always here. And if anything is ever bothering you, you don't have to soldier through it alone. I yeah, know. I appreciate you, Cordelia. Now, I just uh, just need time to get back into the old swing of things, so to speak. And being within your presence, my queen, is, uh, is doing me a good amount of good. 
You're really good. It's good to have you back. It's good to be back. Well, as you can see, I have a bit of uh, accounting to do, so um, why don't you go see Shirley? She's not busy at the moment. Oh, Shirley here. Hmm? <laughs> I think I will. Very good. She goes back to her work. With that, I'm going to shift over to you, Edgar. We find you now, after you have returned to the Grand Halen Hospital over in Silver Slip. There's a, a bit of an awkward return to work for you. Uh, feathers were definitely ruffled by your absence, but you took the blow back with your usual quiet dignity. You slide right back into your work at the hospital on your same schedule, putting one foot in front of the other, like always. Your first day back, we find you in the operating theater, surrounded by eyes, despite everything that's happened in the last week. Your first patient, a worker for the Halen West Railroad Company, a horrific accident over by the foundry station in the steel. The railroad spike blown through the roof of the mouth and out the top of the skull. The body is rolled in and placed before you. You shave the scalp around the spike's exit. Clear out the coagulated blood and small fragments of bone. Slide a finger in, probing for foreign bodies. And then replace the sections of skull that were detached and use adhesive straps to hold all of your delicate work together. And all the while you look down on this man and his ruinous injury, you can't help but see Declan Murphy's face, his mother's, his sister's, and ultimately, your sister, staring back at you from the past, always with you, all these 18 years since that day in Regent Park, when you watched Elizabeth blow away like so much dust on the wind. Do me a favor and Roll for control. Five. You stand above your patient in a fugue state, barely hearing your colleague's voice. Patient is stable. Excellent work, Dr. Lekhorst. Moments later, at the washing station, you scrub your hands, staring at yourself in the mirror, feeling some of that residual ache in your jaw from the run-in with the Murphys. Tell me, what is running through your mind? I'm having a hard time equating the thing that I've spent my life doing outside of Candela with what I just recently did while working for them. They seem to not match. I've <laughs> spent my whole life helping people that I could fix. I can fix problems when they are presented to me. And when I was not in my normal place, when I was out of where I was comfortable, the minute something went wrong, I killed someone. 
I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to... I'm supposed to fix and save people. I'm supposed to fix what's wrong. And I instead flipped my knowledge on its head and used it to end a woman's life who may have just been sick, may have just been confused. Self-defense, to be sure, but... <laughs> that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then I watched this poor old woman's head explode. And I just sat there while all of my companions jumped into action and I sat and I looked at her and I didn't know what to do and I did nothing until my immediate life was in danger. And I spent the entire two hours we were on that island telling everybody it was going to be fine and they were just normal people. <laughs> and I was spectacularly wrong. That is what I am thinking while I wash my hands mm -hmm. in a hospital. Doctor, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I haven't having trouble sleeping, you know. I'm just tired. Look down at your hands, which are red and raw in the near scalding water pouring out of the faucet. I'm fine. With that, we will turn our eyes over to you, Leo. Alone for a time, in your flat, comfortably so, thankfully so. What do you want to do with your time alone? Well, first thing I'm going to do is set up the dining table, uh, since I clearly haven't had time to do that. Push away the couches, uh, push the table back where it should be, bring it out, set it up. I put a very nice tablecloth on it. I set it up for two. Uh, wine glasses, everything somebody needs, candelabras. I'm going to go cook. And I sit down, uh, see what's in the cabinets, I see what I have saved. Cook a chicken, some potatoes, asparagus. Um, it's a nice, uh, small strawberry custard pie for dessert. Um, a little bit of cold pasta on the side. It's just beautiful plates, and I make these two plates, and I put them down at the table. I've uh, put on a record. That's uh, the music maker that's close enough to the kitchen. Uh, I have a little pile of them, and they sort of move and flip from one to the next, and I'm almost at the bottom of this particular pile. Um, I set the whole thing up, Dish out everything, and I sit at one end, and I listen to the record. And the record ends. And then I'm gonna sit up and flip the record over. And I'm going to pick at my food while the second side of the record plays. And then I'm gonna take a second and walk over to the uh, mail slot in the front door, mm. pick up everything that's collected, uh, go through one day, two days, three days worth of mail, three days worth of mail, three days, three days. And I'm gonna put uh, three days worth of mail in the dresser and I'm going to take, I have a wonderful little calendar that's made of brass, it's, and you give it a little click and it goes one day at a time and moves forward. And uh, I'm going to take a second to remember what day it is. And uh, I raise my glass to the 
empty plate of food that's getting cold. As you stand there in your reverie, you notice out one of the windows in this room, the barest bit of glow from downstairs, and you can tell, you're reminded, that the endless well is open right now. Glass. Put my glass down. I go stand next to the window and I look down and the record ends. And I count to ten in my head. And then I quickly move to the front door and I head my way straight down to the end as well. Oh. Um. Mm. You uh, approach the door of this coffee shop, The Endless Well, which has a well-lit sign with the name of the establishment. There's also a simple painting of a well that all of you in the circle are familiar with. Most people in uh, New Fair are. It is uh, a well that has survived from the ancient times that is in Groundswell that supplies water to that area. Um, push the door open. It's not too busy. There's maybe six or seven customers in here right now. Uh, it's a dark wood interior. It's very charming. Simple carvings of old fair and architecture in the panels of the wall with lapping waves accenting the paneling. And Charlie, the woman who runs the place, spots who's you come in. Leo! Charlie, oh, I'm so sorry. I've lasted. It's this, been a bit. Couple of days. I know they've I would say they've you know, brought me out for work, but of course, that's ridiculous. My work can be anywhere when your work is not. Uh, so. How's that life of mystery treating you? Uh, the life of mystery has been uh, mysterious, a little rot with danger, a little bit of fun, a little, a little bit of fun. Uh, do you have anything? I'm looking for something. Uh, let's start with something complicated, anything that you think would be interesting, and then something I can take uh, upstairs and maybe mix with uh, something that uh, young Pleasant uh, brought over to my uh, apartment a couple days ago. Can I surprise you? Oh, please. She begins to move about behind the counter, adding syrups and uh, different shots of liquids that she has in bottles back there. So you found somebody Well, over I, the week, eh? I, I found somebody. I, I found something at the very least over the weekend. It was very, very, it was short, brief, exciting, deeply anonymous. <laughs> Uh, you know what, you know, I, I will give you a hint at the very least. You know how they say that a, uh, a sailor has a, has a lover in every port? Well, a lover in every port has a sailor on every ship. Oh. <laughs> Somebody wins in that equation. Love must be in the air. I met a girl. Oh, in here, somewhere else? I assume you leave here on a cage. I do, no, I, it was uh, over in the varnish. We, uh, we went out on two dates this week. She's really great. I kind of feel like I could spend the rest of my life with her. <laughs> um, I'm being silly. No, but no. She, she stops and just kind of bottle in hand, stares out the window, and you know, she's been smiling this whole time, but then she kind of drops it. Yeah, it's just been real. Tough since so four, you know. Yes. I know the war ended, but it hasn't always felt that way. Mm. But maybe it doesn't have to be like that. Maybe things can be better. Maybe I am in love. Not to be cheap, but love is special. Love is wonderful. Love is always different. It's honestly a dull world word. We use it for far too many things. I wish I could love someone, love my, uh, love my friends, love a cheesecake, all in different ways, but unfortunately we've been given one word for all of this. Um, let's enjoy it. It will always be different, but it's the first and easiest thing to begin. And it makes the sound of whatever happened to you before quiet just a bit for a little while. She knocks twice on the wooden counter. Mm. Finishes making your drink. Uh, you hear the bell ring uh, jingle on the door behind you and you see Felix. Felix, the uh, 
music shop owner from a couple mm. blocks away stumble in, comes up behind you. Wow. Hello, stranger. Hello. I know I missed our appointment. I know I have probably a pile of things to purchase. Look at this guy. Where's he been? <laughs> I don't know. He won't tell me. Just on a ship, I think. A bit of a, I would say a cruise, but if it, actually if you've ever been on a cruise, it was a cruise. It was awful. Oh. As they are. He, well, I'm getting conflicting information because he just told me he had a lot of fun. What kind of fun? Well, that fun, I had that kind of fun, but that was really only a small section of the whole whole event. Honestly, the most eventful and most interesting, but these things can be very dull, and the company was a bit dull, but. What's the news? Mm. Got any scuttlebutt? Mm, nothing particularly interesting at the moment, but I don't know. It's been odd. My friends outside of this place are a little, uh, disjointed right now. I suppose it's going around. Mm. Uh, how have you been out of curiosity? <sighs> fine, I'm fine. Hanging in. Shop's doing all right, I suppose. Mm. Oh, it'll be doing a bit better. I'm pretty sure I have a pile uh, uh, collecting right now. I do apologize. I was not expecting to be uh, away for quite this long. No, don't worry about it. Maybe we can... Uh get ourselves into that masquerade happening in the varnish later this week and uh, knock back a few. I had completely forgotten. Uh, if you're interested, do you want to be my plus one or should I be yours? <laughs> I don't have tickets, <laughs> it's a little higher than my uh, normal rung on the ladder. Interesting, interesting, who owes me a favor? Who's, do you know who's throwing this, this little shindig? Uh, well, it's being had at the uh, Hayden House in the varnish. Mm. Um, Interesting. Uh, it's uh, some sort of an auction, uh, if I understand right. It's, uh, someone told me about it in the shop yesterday. Mm. And then I, I heard somebody uh, on the trolley, too, talking about the same thing. But you know, Talk of the town. Auction. <clears throat> so you're the one with the connections, not me. Vintage, like antique auction, that sort of thing? Mm. I don't know. I know. I know vinyl. <clears throat> well, I will start with the most interesting person and slowly make my way up just to <laughs> see what's available. Um, if it does happen, let's see. Um, Charlie, God forbid if I get tickets to this, can you help me dress this? <clears throat> dress me? This isn't good enough? Well, I mean, it's okay for here. No, it's not good enough. Absolutely not. If I'm your plus one, you have to look better than I do, and if you're my plus one, you have to better look, look than you do. It's just inevitable. I leave myself in your hands. I'm always excited to just bring out the best in someone, <laughs> clothing-wise. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> let us put a pin there mm. and return to you, Grimoria. So you sent off a messenger uh, you have made it known to Mrs. Fogg? Uh, did I send a messenger? No, no, no. Um, I'm sorry. Remind me, because I might have been juggling in my head. You mean to proposition Mrs. Fogg, say that you could be of help? Uh, no, Mr. so, Mark? yes. Yeah, well, quickly I sent um, a letter to uh, Leo mm -hmm. uh, in code, letting him know that we needed to meet yes. the whole, our, our whole team right. uh, because something was afoot. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, sort of feel like um, either through our appointment next the next day, I can sort of, I don't know, um, I'm trying to find a way to pitch the fogs mm -hmm. to get me in. To get you in. And I, I think I might be able to do that through tomorrow's performance. Right. Well, maybe let's workshop it with the circle. Okay. Let us, that letter would have arrived by the time you had your coffee and talked within the endless well. Um, so I'd say you'd find that letter pinned to your door, actually, upon arrival. Um, so now you have this information. Um, I think we don't need to get bogged down in the details. Let's say that, um, the very next morning is the soonest that all of you have gotten word, first from Grimoria to you, Leo, and then word finally reached you, 
the morning after your uh, fun and J-O-B, and you after, I'm sure, a very restful night of sleep. <laughs> Uh, and by about 11 or so the next day, you sneak out yep. of the house in the eaves, and we find you now gathered, uh, your dinner from the night before cleared away, sitting in the reflected light of this crimson mirror. I'm so sorry, life. forgive me, I don't have a lot of time. I have to make it back for an appointment, but I thought it was important we meet. I overheard a conversation between my employers about an auction, or a masquerade, it's unclear, um, where they are going to be either, I don't know, auctioning off something of high value. I want to say that it's related somehow to Atia's bones that we delivered to the Red Hand, or Maybe not to the red hand. What did we deliver that to? You delivered to the red hand. We delivered it to the red hand. We, 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 there, there possibly could be more of that out there. Yes, and I don't know if it's half. He said something about someone <clears throat> selling half of the bones for a really cheap price or something like that. So I for, just have a for feeling. For clarity, yes. Mm. <laughs> you heard him say that a man named Aroha Tamakai yes. sold half of an ancient historical figures remains to one party yeah. and kept the other and is now trying to sell the remains of what Kendall believed they were in full possession of. Right, so she relays that. Yeah. And um, I think that we have to somehow make it into this masquerade, Mr. Amicus, I, I think if anyone can, it could be you. I'm, I have a plan to persuade my employers to let me come well, let's let's uh, take a second before we uh, uh, busy ourselves with the frogs. And uh, uh, what was what was the name of the person throwing it? I didn't write it down. I was flirting. Aroha. Aroha. Tama. Kai. Oh, that was what the, the name I heard as well. When, when uh, no, no, you, no, you didn't get a name. Right. Okay, I thought there was like a. Was it a location? Or was it a location? The Hayden House. Hayden House. Hayden House. Um, yes, because in our first. Uh, Chapter of this, yes. we you you mentioned Oroha mm -hmm. Tamakai. Yes, I briefly mentioned a high-level contact within the Red Hand, yeah. which you all know, being part of Candela Obscura, we're in our Mind Palace. No worries. Uh, a high-level member of the Red Hand, who are traffickers in ancient relics, artifacts, curios, expensive art, and occasionally dangerous things. And Candela learned of uh, the Red Hand's possession. Contact was made, and the Red Hand agreed to sell. Mm -hmm. Candela often goes, sends people off to find things, secure them. This time they weighed the pros and cons and decided that forking over a mountain of cash yeah. was worth it because of the significance and danger of these remains. Right. So I'm afraid we've come into possession of only half of the remains. Well, that is unfortunate. Oh. Uh, would I know Haven House, would, would I know of it, or would I also, would I you assume it was in it. Haven um, Hills, or? No, it's actually in the Varnish. Okay. Am I remembering that correctly? Yes, yeah. it's in the Varnish. It is in the uh, eastern portion of the Varnish. Mm -hmm. And um, you've actually been there once or twice because it is, like a very expensive, opulent home, a large home in the varnish that is used for galas and events. Um, you don't, you've never known that it was in any way tied to this man, Aroha, or the Red Hand, but it's hard to know who owns what in this city. It's fair. There's a lot of grease and grift. Well, it's funny that you should mention all this. I was already trying to get tickets to this event. Oh. So that is uh, quite a coincidence. I heard about it last night. Oh, I, I don't know the rest of the plan, but I think that we should try to somehow, I don't know, disrupt this auction and make sure that those remains are safe. Disrupted indeed. I Just think the best course is to just let Candela know and they can decide. It's not necessarily our job to go getting something we weren't asked to get, is it? Well, maybe we should definitely get this information to Zora. <clears throat> have you contacted her? I yet? haven't, no, I should have. The way that you 
customarily do that is in this room. There is a small little side table next to the door to Leo's bedroom uh, with a silver tray on it, and notes are left there, and they just seem to disappear, and sometimes notes just appear there. Mm. Um, Edgar, if you wouldn't mind, for some bizarre reason, you seem to have the best handwriting in the group, despite the uh, uh, clear stereotype, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Pens on the on the vanity. Yes, yes, yes. So. And I'll write a note conveying all the information that we've heard, mm -hmm. adding that may or may not be true, mm -hmm. and then send it off. Still, since I was already going, and you were already plotting, it wouldn't be um, out of the ordinary to just do some reconnaissance, not get involved necessarily, mm -hmm. just well, to take a look around. There's nothing to stop starting the process of trying to find tickets. I just don't think we should necessarily mean to disrupt an entire gala. Edgar, are you worried about wearing a mask to a gala? Is not your style? I don't need to worry about that. I, I'm worried about jumping t two feet forward into something again. I think I've had quite enough of that. For well, I guess one. I just, my, I don't know, uh, my eagerness was only meant to no. prevent anything like no, remember, what happened is, on the ship to happen this again? This is valuable information. If there's any kind of of any inkling that these bones might be out there, and what we went through on that ship could be here in New Fair, we definitely need to investigate this, and we need to report what we find back to Candela. I didn't mean to imply that your initial that your impulse was wrong. I just oh no, that's just okay. want to exercise caution so that we don't all get beaten up again. Yes, you're right. You're very wise. Edgar, you look past um, Grimoria's shoulder and notice that the note you left in the tray has already vanished from the tray. Well, I guess we sit and wait, huh? Well, I'm certainly not going to sit and wait. I have people to talk to to see if I can make this happen. I, uh, I have my ways of, of procuring some tickets. Um, I assume you have your ways of procuring some tickets, oh, although obviously you can't mention my name and I certainly can't be any plus one of yours. That would go very poorly. Well, I don't think I can be a plus one under my family name either, but you know, we'll figure it out. That's very fair. <laughs> uh, doctor, I, do you have any notions of anybody who owes you a favor in this direction? Um, I don't go to parties if that wasn't clear already. Oh, no, it's very clear. I, I would hate to imply that it isn't. It's just that there's nothing more enticing, especially to someone who has enough money to be consistently bored, than a person who refuses to ever speak to them, suddenly having a moment of weakness. I'll do my best to find a ticket. Ooh. And I'll do my best to make sure you don't have to as quickly as possible. I think you should make him squirm a little bit and ask someone a favor, but that's just me. Mm. Um, I think I, I have to leave now. Um, I have to make my appointment, but thank you for meeting at such short notice. Always. Oh, because of the family, Grimoire, Grimoire. Oh, terrible, but I think it'll, it'll be better. Are they too hard on you for missing those days? Not too much. Let me it... know if I need to. <laughs> yes, mm. thank you. Uh, I, let, me, let me show you out really quickly. Okay. Um, once we're out of earshot of the, of the other two, my dear, I know, and you have a very good idea to go through your employers to, to find a way into this, and I think the way that you're looking to go into is very clever. Um, if I can find something first, I'd let you know. The least that we can uh, involve those dreadful, dreadful people would be best for all of us, and oh, definitely you as well. I agree, um, but will they, will they see me there and question why I'm there? I mean, can a mask really? I'm honestly a bit something? irritated that they even could get into something like this. They're just so awful, well, dull. This is their line of work. Well, you are sadly the most interesting thing they have to talk about, so <laughs> you are always the thing they will put forward. <laughs> Dreadful fucking people. Thank you. She gives him a kiss on the cheek. Do what you can, don't take them too seriously, and just be careful, be careful, be careful. I will. Call if anything happens, send a note. Yes, I will. 
Oh, all right. Let's get to work. I, I think um, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm back in the room. Mm -hmm. What I think the best course that I should take is utilizing uh, maybe to take another cover than as someone who's invited the party. Maybe I should be a worker at the party. I have some connections with those who might be catering the event. And I might be able to slip in. Maybe I have I hear something from behind the curtain, so to speak, mm. that might be beneficial to us. Or maybe some whispers in the background that I might be able to pick up okay. and report back to you. Let me see yeah. if I can investigate that. It might have been long enough now that, you know, especially with a mask, no one, no one uh, will remember your face too terribly. Mm. There's a wonderful line where they even stop remembering what you look like. It's very helpful. <laughs> Oh, that takes care of that, and doctor, if you think of anyone, and if not, I will try and think of somebody. I feel like there's a, yeah, I'll do my best. Excellent. Uh, and uh, yes, I will let you know, and uh, yes, we will discuss options, hopefully. Soon. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, which one of these threads would we like to pull first? Well, we can jump right into Gamoria's performance, if you like. <laughs> so you scuttle out of Leo's apartment quick as you can, trying to get back home. Again, yeah. it takes at least 30 minutes to get there from here hopefully before you're missed, and you do, you um, use the rear entrance that deliveries are, uh, food and other things are made, and um, hear them in discussion in his study and glide into the house. To uh, the showroom. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, it's still uh, about an hour before the man in question is here to um, have his viewing and be pitched to this, this ancient uh, brass, uh, excuse me, bronze dagger <clears throat> from, that's probably two weeks old. Uh, what do you do to prepare? Well, I think maybe I uh, do a little bit of a dress rehearsal mm -hmm. for the fogs. And I think it's, you know, she's made up, she's got this uh, beautiful sort of um, robe and like a lot of rouge, trying to look, I guess, as sort of mediumistic as possible, mm -hmm. considering that she's like an 18-year-old girl. Um, <laughs> and so they, they've got the, uh, he's set the dagger in front of her, and I think she starts a performance, and it's very different than how you, people perceive Grimoria. I think she, slips right into a sort of accent, which is maybe mysterious to some. Uh, to us, it just, it's a version of something that sounds like this, you know? And she starts the performance with the dagger and she says, betrayal, traicion, this dagger. used in the ultimate act of betrayal. To stab a high priest, and she's sort of thinking of the man she channeled mm -hmm. on the boat. And she's got like a, you know, like sort of a party trick where you bite into something and it could be cyanide, but instead it's like blood. And she chokes up. <laughs> a little squid. <laughs> Could be cyanide, you don't know. <laughs> I mean, it could be. He served ancient gods and died for it in an act of betrayal. Or maybe it was a sort of revenge. Mr. Fogg, give me that, that vial you showed me yesterday, the ancient vial. She winks. This is during a performance, or this a, is the a dress rehearsal? rehearsal. The dress rehearsal. Mr. Fogg, give me the, give me the vial. The fuck are you talking about? The other vial you showed me the other day. The vial. Yes. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hold on. He leaves the room for a second. 
You hear drawers opening and closing and something knocks over. She looks falls. at Mrs. Fogg. Hopefully this will be worked out before the gentleman comes. Well, I mean, once we have the lights down yes, and I, I go down and work the pole that makes the table do the thing. Yes, this know, tastes gonna... very bad, so the sooner we can do it, the better. I got it, I got it. What, oh, what are we doing? Thank you. You see, these two artifacts go together. This vial Contained a poison. Yes, an act of betrayal. They must not be separated. They must come as a package, you understand? I'm sensing an ancient high priest was killed because he poisoned someone named. I can't get her name. A very, very powerful alchemist. How's that? <laughs> you know, even when she's full of shit, she's brilliant. Well, I think we could sell two, you know, at once. Yeah. And then. A twofer. A twofer. You know, and it's um, ancient. Um, and so I don't know. I, th I feel pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking. I'm. I'm Still a little ticked off. I know. I gotta be honest. I understand, and as a way to sort of make up for it, um, I sort of overheard that you might have had some plans pretty soon, uh, an auction of sorts. What if you brought <clears throat> some of your artifacts and I could sell them for you at this auction? Were you talking about the thing? I don't think so. Maybe I heard one of the servants <coughs> talk about uh, you being gone or procuring some sort of masks or something. I just <clears throat> guessed. I just wanted to make myself available to you. <clears throat> you know, we Mrs. can move some product. Mrs. Fogg looks stricken and says, oh, I'm going to kill that maid. She's out. Oh, it's Get not her one. fault. I just want to be of service, and I feel so terribly about not being back in time. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, it's a little irregular. This is... Uh, not a party for everyone, you understand. I mean, I understand. we love you. Yes, well, I can work on it. I mean, I think I just sold, hopefully, two for one. Proof's in the pudding, yeah. you know, proof's in the pudding. There is a ring at the bell, and Mrs. Fogg exit. Oh, Gerald, come in. <clears throat> We've been waiting for you. And she ushers in a very sort of a rotund man in, uh, like a, a jacket with tails and um, uh, like a pocket watch hanging off to the side. He has got a, a walrus type mustache. Mm. I, uh, I uh, am very excited about this. I, uh, I've heard a lot about you. Gr Welcome. Grimoire, is it? Uh, Grimoire, yeah. Oh, oh, she's lovely. Um, oh, I... Do I sit here? Yes. Excellent, excellent, okay. Before we start. I have to get back to the bank in like 20 minutes. Is this quick? Very quick. I'm getting, is there, where is your mother? Uh, well, she was in the silver slip. Yes, she wants you to know she is here with you too. Mrs. Fogg has dimmed the lamps in this room and quietly closed the curtains around you and now it is very dark in here. And we start with betrayal. <laughs> she does the performance. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, um, about halfway through, uh, as you go into your performance, to your very skillful bullshit, um, <laughs> Mrs. Fogg disappears and goes down into the, there's a, a pantry down below, and a hole has been drilled into the ceiling of that room, into the floor of this one. And you know as you continue and start to spit blood on the table, the table starts to slowly rotate hmm. in the room, and the man is like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, this is magic. I've always <laughs> wanted to see some magic. <laughs> and she makes sure to cough a little more, maybe some spills like right in front of him, right on the table in front of him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Fogg. Here. Yes, these two go together. Oh, you must not separate them, Gerald. You must not. 
I, I would never. I'll, t I'll take them both. I'll take them both. Uh, do you take trucks? Of course we do, sir. Of course we do. Uh, do you have a hanky, Grimoria? Of course. She hands him a hanky. That had she spritz with some perfume. <laughs> Before. Ooh. Ooh. Shoves it in his pocket, and they uh, <laughs> head out of the room into the study, and you can hear them signing the deal and a check being written. Um, and um, Mrs. Fogg is left in the room with you, just sort of judging you. Cleaning up the blood. Mm. What was that? Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Um, all right, I, I, I'm sure we can work out uh, a ticket, but you have to be glued to us at this event. Absolutely. This is not a place to misstep. And if you say the wrong thing, it's over it's for over. us in yeah. this crowd, okay? Yeah. So just keep your mouth shut until it's your time to act. Okay. All right? Whatever you say. We're bringing a couple of busts to the event, and we're, those are going to be auctioned off. Okay, um, I'll work on those. Um, who knows, one of them might be... Pre uh, they're both going to be great. <laughs> Party starts at seven, and then the auction kicks off at eight. Um, just uh, this, you've got a little, did you uh, have a spell or something? There's just like a ghost of a... Oh, um, yes. Well, I thought maybe we could work it in. You wanna go, go for like a smudgy look that night, yes. all right? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, okay. okay, okay. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Fogg. I won't disappoint. Okay, and then we shift over to Leo Amicus. I am staring at a small Rolodex, mm -hmm. deciding how much I'm going to hurt myself. It is bristling this. with many, many names. <laughs> how important is this? Mm. Leo, um, as mm. you're looking at the Rolodex for mm. feels like five minutes, just unsure where or how to proceed. You notice um, an envelope, a new one with a, a, a very beautiful calligraphy letter Z in the silver tray by the door. I get up, I turn off the uh, current thing that's playing in the wax cylinder, uh, my little wax cylinder player, and because uh, I hate listening while reading, I open it up and I quickly blaze over it. Okay. Um, it is a note from her that says, looked into it, Tamakai has played us. We need to meet tonight. Possible? Shit, that's everything. I write a overly fancy yes <laughs> on the same piece of paper, <laughs> thick enough to bleed through the page. Mm -hmm. Fold it back, put it on the gla on the silver tray. Mm -hmm. Turn around, stare at myself in the mirror, straighten. Myself, mm -hmm. the things I do for you fucking people. <laughs> and I think I'm going to go try and corner, get a nice little corner table at, um, well, first I'm gonna write some quick notes. To, but did this seem like it was just for, was it me or to to the circle? Did it, did it seem to be the more that? Uh, it it was for the circle. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, I was trying to remember the wordage. Um, I'm writing three quick notes. Mm -hmm. um, one I take a little longer with. I take a little longer with the oars than the other two. Uh, <laughs> write them down. Distribute them. Uh, well, just I have a, I have a service. Mm -hmm. I, this money. My God, you are still ridiculously wealthy. If, if it's a problem, money can solve. It's not a problem. Um, I have, I have someone come to pick it up, make sure that the, that the it is taken care they are, of. They are whisked away. And I'm away. going to go find, dress a little more inconspicuously, and I'm going to go find a corner mm, at a restaurant that I know 
Hunt Liana, Frequence. In Liana is your angle. Um, they cut down the amount of time I had, didn't they? Okay. <laughs> and, mm. and was one of those messages sent off for Liana? No, it was no. one of each of theirs. Each of them. I just know this is a place she likes to eat, and I'm giving myself an out to uh, reel in to Walter mm. if I don't see her over lunch. Okay. I'm just letting fate handle it. Okay, so we're, you head off and in under an hour, you are walking in the door of this restaurant and you do a quick scan across the place and sure enough, in a back uh, booth, in the um, uh, best seats in the house, you see Aunt Liana in her 60s. Uh, she has a small uh, dog in a purse next to her uh, on the bench um, and a wide flower, an orchid uh, coming out of the lapel of her fancy jacket and uh, a wide-brimmed hat, and she is um, on her own, drinking a uh, midday cocktail. And she looks up and... I sit down quietly. <clears throat> Just to get it out of the way, you look fantastic. <laughs> and that's as much small talk, obviously, as we need. <clears throat> Are you all right? Have you burned through the money? Is there uh, anything amiss? Oh, the temptation to burn through the money is very powerful. But no, I've actually been relatively conservative with it, especially considering my taste. Mm. <laughs> ah, this is not about money. This is about uh, a friend who needs help. Charity case. Well, that and also I may actually. I'm, I'm working. I'm working on a man. Just putting some feelers out there. It's two. It's it's two birds with one uh, uh, stone. I sense a long story coming. Have you spoken with your father? You've got to be fucking kidding, right? Has he spoken to me? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Um, no. Honestly, I don't know if I have the stomach for it right now. It's been a bit difficult. You know, at some point, one of you is going to have to bridge that gap, and your crankful father is too stubborn for that. It is really going to have to be you, Leo. I know it's a lot to ask. I'm not saying I can't be bribed, but what I'm asking for is not enough for that. And he, I should point out, could very easily put the word out. He wouldn't even have to put the nice word out. He could send bloody Artie down to talk to me, and that would be enough, even if it were just to argue about the amount of money all right, I'm spending. All right, I thought maybe I could work out a miracle, I have to try. I still care about you both, Leo. It's, it pains me, but fine. I appreciate, I do appreciate it. Downstream it goes. So tell me, what, uh, what is it that you need from your Aunt Liana? There's an auction happening. Uh, tomorrow, I believe. You want to go to the Hayden house? I do, I would love a plus two, but I would take a plus, I, I would love a plus two, but I will take a, a plus one if I have to. Plus two. So you need three tickets total. You want to go to the Gilded Garden tomorrow night for charity. Most likely I only need two, but three would be, uh, it's for a good cause, I swear. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. do. All right, I can do three. Uh, there will be strings attached to that, though. I know. Um, I am championing the Hello Harbor Women's Society right now. They're doing amazing things for that district. Um, you should come with me and see what they're doing. It is really quite, quite phenomenal what, what the people in that stratosphere have to deal with, and, and they're very brave these women, so if you would care to make, you know, a contribution in the 10-ish 
region, I can acquire you as many tickets as you want, within reason. I swear I will not ask for five. Um, <clears throat> Make it 15 and it's done. For you? Absolutely. Why can't they all be like you? <sighs> well, it's not about winning, but if I get to be your favorite aunt and pull in the biggest haul for my charity of choice, I'll take that win. I, uh... Give us a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what this means to me. You are going to need a... Uh, do all of your pluses have the formal attire required? Do they have, uh, you're going to need masks, all of you. Oh yes, I can shop. It's one of the things I'm best at. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing you have not burned through all that money. I've been trying to be frugal on occasion. Mm. I don't need out anymore, mm. except right now, clearly. Mm. All right, well, I'll uh, run a young man past your place uh, Time is it? Mm. Um, I can get it over by the evening, I think. Uh, your auction, if you're looking to make a bid on anything, is at uh, seven tomorrow. At seven. Oh, that will do very well. <coughs> uh, Haven, yes. <clears throat> All right, now, have a drink with me and tell me about this man, and then I'll be off. I'm having my uh, cheeks worked on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it's about time, isn't I'm gonna it? give them a good beating and uh, rub in some liniment. <sighs> well, Felix. You can join me if you want. Oh, let me know when I may take you up on that. It's been a bit busy with my side projects, mm -hmm. which I'm We'll only talk about when it's time. Interesting. Well, it's here to there, so if you have to be somewhere soon, I would. Sadly, I do have a quick meeting to take care of. She uh, waves to the uh, waiter who comes over and fills that drink, and you spend the next hour gossiping with your aunt about the family that you spend so little time with now. We had a thread here, I believe. Um, I would say that from your time in uh, service, you definitely knew a mess hall cook who, uh, in the years since, has ended up in the catering business, and you uh, can find him in the Seidel. Um, he works part-time in a bar down there uh, when he is between gigs for catering. So I think you would follow that thread, and we will make our way into sort of the middle-class sprawl of the Seidel as we get later on in the night. There are electric lights uh, warming up the neighborhood as we get darker around here. You walk past uh, an old bookshop that reads The Antiquarian in the window and look in and can see a, a man wheeling by, pulling a book off the shelf and a little dog trotting out behind him, a puppy. You walk on past, and at the end of the block is this bar, Skiffs. And uh, sure enough, you walk in and uh, see your guy, your uh, friend, Gail, uh, working the bar. Gail? Mm -hmm. Hello, sir. How uh, are you? As I live and breathe, <laughs> what do I owe the pleasure? Well, you know, a little bit of mischief, mischief a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, inquiry, if I may. Oh, we're talking business, all right. I'm all ears. Listen, I know you. Um, I know you have a catering business going on right now, and I was happening to wonder if you heard about a certain event uh, that's going to be held recently for the, uh, shall we say, upper crusts. Well, that's going on uh, almost every night in this city. Uh, there is. Um, the uh, Caribou Club. Uh, Looking for more, more, more of like a select group of individuals. Maybe something that might be a little more hush-hush. Uh, something. You're talking about the Hayden House. 
I'm talking about the Hayden house. What kind of trouble are you looking to get into? No, oh, man, <laughs> man, nothing too big. <laughs> I just wanted to stick my head around. It's such a mystery, that house. You know, I just want to hear if there's any whispers of, you know, you know how my side business, I kind of put keep my ear to the ground and make sure that, you know. I do, that's why I'm asking the question. I don't want anything to lead back to me. And I'm not working that one. I know a guy, I know a guy who uh, is part of that outfit. I guarantee that if you help me with this, nothing will get back to you. And I will definitely not use your name in, uh, in passing in conversations. What I'm trying to do is simply gather information, nothing more. I'm not trying to cause trouble. You know that'd be bad for my business too. Want to keep to the shadow something innocuous. Server job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Luke can do that. Oh. Because we have. All right. Well, you were always straight with me. And uh, I owe you a lot more than that, so. I might be willing to wet the whistle, so to speak, if you want me to have a little conversation with my. Um, Back at the club, maybe I might be able to get you a little extra time. Just saying. I mean, I know, I know you I'm have a girlfriend and everything, no. but I'm just saying, you know, the I'm offer's there. I'm not gonna there. say no. The offer's there if you want it, hush, hush. I'm not gonna say no, oh, so if you wanna work that out. All right. Uh, anyway, have a shot with me. Oh, of course, what do we have? Uh, Picks up two different bottles, one brown, one clear, and begins to mix them Ooh, in the glass. Ooh, a concoction, I like this. Uh, we're talking about an all night thing, or we're talking about just a little hair of the dog thing? <sighs> I'm on work. Ugh, oh, yeah. shucks, I was hoping that we'd get into a little bit of trouble. Slides it across. To friendship. And the ones we lost. Cheers. God's knocked back. <laughs> I'm going to slide over to you, Doc and ask if you mean to. Sounds like we're covered, but I would love to see you squirm. Is there anything you want to do here? Just a second. Having never really uh, tried to do anything like this before, but having spent enough time with these people, the first thought that comes into my head is that I should I've treated enough people that I'm sure I've worked on someone who is well-to-do in those circles. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, well, not call, but I'll call upon call one upon. of them. Um, and ask if there's any way I could acquire a ticket. Okay. You actually call upon the head of the hospital's Board, who you saved two years ago when you removed a tumor mm -hmm. from the man's brain, and he has been walking ever since. He's not someone that you're friendly with, per se. You work for him, ultimately, mm -hmm. but the debt is a debt. Mm -hmm. uh, you find him, or I should say, you find his office at the Grand Halen Hospital and approach uh, Vera, uh, his secretary, who sees you coming. Dr. Uh, Lycoris. Ly Ly Dr. Lycoris, hi, can I help you today? Um, is, is he in? Um, he is, he's busy, is it important? Not desperately, I just wanted to run over something with him. Um, I had more of a question, really. Um, it's not desperately important. I can come back later. <clears throat> she swivels around in her swivel chair and looks back. The door is like, you can't see him, but she kind of looks to look in the gap of his office door. Uh, one, one second. And she trots over there and pops her head in. Um, 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 um. um yeah, okay. Uh, come in, he says he'll see you. She takes her seat. I walk in. Good day, doctor. Uh, you find Thank you. Quentin Gunner sitting at his desk. 
Uh, he is a tall, thin man, not quite as thin as you, with a graying white comb over and um, very thin beard. Um, and he is wearing a white coat uh, and a red tie and uh, has a very uh, auspicious golden pin with the crest of the Halen Hospital on it. Dr. Lycoris. Mr. Gunner. Um, this is irregular, but not yes. unwelcome. I actually, I, um, I don't mean to bother you, but um, something's come up and I want to, Unless I wanted to ask you for a favor. Um, I've become aware, that, well, to make a long story short, I've recently, recently acquired an interest in, um, or at least a desire to decorate my house. And um, I hear there's an auction happening at the Halen House. I've heard there'd be some interesting artifacts or pieces there that I would love to take a look at. <laughs> But unfortunately, I don't have a ticket. And I was wondering if you had any connections or know about how I would go about getting one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Didn't you just miss three days of work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that is amusing. Well, that aside, um, I have spent the last two years with my three grandchildren, and I don't know that that would have been possible without you, Edgar, so as much as I uh, want to laugh in your face, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, I can't ignore the debt that I owe you. Many conflicting feelings here. Um, I, I of course, I'm... of course, of course I can. Just the one ticket. Just the one. He suddenly looks sheepish. F forgive me, forgive me. Um, our time in this world is precious. I'm grateful for every extra minute that you've afforded me, and um, I didn't mean to write off Hard week, I, uh, I hear. You've looked a bit grim on the premises, actually, so um, apologies. It's fine. There was a lot of unforeseen uh, circumstances that happened. He's rubbing the back of his head, which is where you operated on it. Yes, life has a way of doing that, doesn't it? Never seems to stop. Well, um. This is tomorrow night. Uh, is there somewhere where I can have, uh, I actually have two tickets. Uh, I'm not going to go away. I mean, if, I'm sure I can, I'm sure there's a friend of mine who would be happy to go. Yeah. Um, I'll have them brought by your office. That would be lovely. By end of day. Uh, thank you, and um, I am very sorry again about the unexpected missing of work. I was just busting your chops. I, 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 I know. Um, but I also, you don't, as much as I'm very appreciative of what you're doing, you don't owe me for what I did. So that is not true. That's not why I do this. You're a fine doctor and we're lucky to have you. I hope you, uh, have a wonderful time and happy hunting for your new home. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll just hurriedly leave the office. <laughs> Throw up in the trash can. <laughs> As I go past the, the secretary, I just uh, thank you again. All right. Charmer, you head down the hall to your office. A um, little bookkeeping. Remind me, Leo, your note to Zora. Mm. The gist of that was one more time to keep me on track? Yes. Just yes. We were to meet at what time? Meet you know, at what time? Uh, it was this evening. It was this evening. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, I am going to sweep us forward in time where all of you have 
convened at Leo's house, and on the table, we have one, two, three, four, five. And one's going to Felix. But currently, you are in possession of five, and you are in possession of two. We are looking down at seven uh, dark green pieces of paper, uh, embossed silver filigree, uh, and printed on them, uh, it says, Journey to the Gilded Garden, Masquerade and Auction, of and for Hale's Finest, Mask and Ticket Required, Hayden House, 632 Cornelia Street, doors open at 7, auction begins promptly at 8. Before we proceed, yes. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. You sent three notes, one to each of us. Mm -hmm. What did they say? That's a good callback. Um, I conveyed, I conveyed, uh, to the two of you, uh, that we have been asked for a meeting tonight at my house, uh, that we should convene uh, drinks and and a, a, a light spread will be available. Um, and charcuterie. a little charcuterie plate, just because I, I, I like to keep busy. Um, and yours, very quickly at the bottom in slight handwriting said, I feel I know you well enough to respect that we should never know each other that well. <laughs> but. I feel a pallor, and if you ever wish to decompress at someone who will not Yell back. My door is always open and relatively soundproof. Please figure out a way to unwind LA. I get that note and I read it and I. <laughs> so we're all met in Leo's apartment, um, trying to decide what to do here. Um, it isn't too long, though, before the door opens behind you all, and Zora strides into the room, holding uh, a satchel in one hand and a mask in the other, closes the door behind her, and she finds an empty seat and says, all right, we have some things to figure out. I have brought a few party gifts, and um, I want to hear what you're thinking, and I want you to know what I know. We need to act tomorrow night. I have sent feelers out as quickly as I can, and it does appear that Tamakai has had us. Mm. I know that you have only just arrived back in town the other day, um, so forgive me, but this is your new assignment. I need the four of you in there tomorrow night. I need you to make sure that those remains do not get handed off to any other buyer and that they leave that place tomorrow night in our possession to be sealed within the Fourth Pharaohs. So, you tell me what you're thinking, and maybe I will add my uh, two pieces. My employers are, uh, I think, the, uh, one of the lesser auctions before the big auction, and I can at least provide a distraction for about five minutes or so. Mm. Um, and maybe that will help. Oh, I'm going to jump in already. That is not what I'm hearing is happening. Um, there is a general auction for the night, but Secret auction is going on. Correct. No. Correct. Araha is going to be showing off his uh, prize to a very select few, away from the general auction. I believe that this um, party and the auction are a bit of a smokescreen mm -hmm. for the uh, real game behind the scenes. Do you know if uh, we need to, of course, this is gonna be a dumb question, 
Will it be within the premises? Will it be outside the premises? It'll be within the property, I assume. <clears throat> in the secret location of the property, or one that we know. Uh, Grimoria, hmm. when you were overhearing the Fogs talk, Mr. Fogg talked about uh, Aroha's uh, little museum on the third floor. Right. Uh, so it seems a logical conclusion. Okay. I relay that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good to know. All right. Are you all set for formal wear, or? Yes. Uh, wear yeah. my costume. Your costume. Yes. Uh, it's a robe. I'll be going with my employers. Um, it's rather a shock, but just try not to laugh. <laughs> I've seen a bit of it. It's. It's. I think it's quite good. You look lovely. Whatever you wear. Thank you. I would love some emergency formal wear for you, for both of you, actually. That might not be a bad idea in case chaos yes. ensues. Shopping might be in order if uh, you all are not set. Well, I actually will be wearing something less formal. Well, a more of a workman attire. I'll be, uh, I'll be with the, uh, the servers behind the scenes, so to speak. Sure, but just in case we need to do a quick flip, it might not have, be bad to have an option B. Of course, of course, I've always, yeah. always. Since we have enough invitations to make things work. You just want to take me shopping. I s really, this is, I mean, it, it's wonderful. Don't, please don't get me wrong. I just, you need bad. more of it. No, not at all. It's functional, <laughs> tactical. All right, yes. that sounds Look, excellent. Um, yes? Uh, what is the best course of action should one of us pose as a buyer? Uh, I don't know how to get the artifact yeah. out of there. I believe the buyers have already been contacted. Mm -hmm. This is for a select few. Here is what I propose. She takes the satchel and opens it up. Um, and she pulls out a small clay um, wheel with uh, sort of the etching of a sun in it. And there looks to be some sort of chip of quartz in the middle. And there are the lines of little alchemical glyphs cut into uh, the radius of it. So, these are hard to come by, and they can only be used once. What I propose is that you find your way, acquire the item, and then you need only to plant this on the nearest doorway, and it will bring you into the pharaohs. So, it's going to be difficult to get to Griffia's remains, the rest of her remains, but once you have them, I don't want to create a scene. I just want you to be gone. So, the challenge will be getting in, but thankfully not out. Well, hopefully. Considering what we acquired the other half in, I'm assuming they have another secure box, and this time we are not on a ship in the middle of a storm, so it'd at least be a little more stable. Oh, thank God. So as long as we can get our hands on it and get to a door, easy. I'm sure those work. They work. Um, you need to just press it firmly to the door, as hard as you can, and then just turn whatever knob or latch is appropriate. It will only work once, a single time, so choose wisely. Oof. And we each get one. No. <laughs> it's or we get a one. fortune, dear. It's just the one. Oh, that's lovely. So no jumping into the ocean while we're in there. Well, there I was a fun see if there's that. somebody with a, you know, someone's choking on a, a shrimp cocktail, I just hope, you know, just let them go. <laughs> just, clearly they must have money, it's really not worth it. Not even a pat on the back, huh? Maybe a very hard one, but make it quick. Okay. Do we know who the buyers that have been selected are? Uh. Good question, Morgan. Thank you. Only one, uh, and that is a member that I am friendly with in the OUP. Um, Interesting. The. Uh, are trying to um, get it for um, 
Is there any possible way? Sorry? I just thought of something. What if we took the place of one of the buyers? Can we take a, can, do we, is there a list that we can procure to see if we can maybe, I don't know. I'm going out on a bit of a limb here, but I'm going to say that all of the buyers are going to be already known by the seller. Certainly by each other. But and by each other. But they're gonna be disguised, are they not? Masks. Well, it's a masquerade. A masquerade. I think to keep things as anonymous as possible. We just need to find someone who resembles some kind of body type. Mm -hmm. My shade gives me away, but maybe there might be somebody else who uh, might be of some. <laughs> I <laughs> practically guarantee there will be one or two people of your family in that room. Which is the problem, though, is that is this is the sort of place where both of us are going to have a difficult time not being recognized. Lay low. So we get a full coverage. More of a helmet than a mask. <clears throat> Sadly, I have a very distinctive way about myself. I don't even don't know how much mask it would take. Well, no one really knows me. I can... Me neither. My family is so above it all, they will never oh. notice a serviceman or any kind of server, so I think I'm pretty safe. As long as they don't serve the dish directly at the serve the dish directly to the table, I think I should be fine. Or, you know, yeah, to make too much of a scene in front of them. But which is honestly to the table, not just you, to the table. Uh, perhaps you will want to wait until uh, the auction begins. Well, that was distracting. Yes. And that should increase your chances, at least have less eyes on you. Find out where they're storing the item. It would be a shame if Mr. and Mrs. Frog uh, became ill and couldn't go to the show and had to send you all by yourself. I wouldn't know how to do that. Mm. I do. <laughs> Not that I condone that in any manner, but I'm just saying there is a way. If that's the course of action we need to take, I don't particularly want to, but. Or at the very least, once they're there, we could get them to leave a bit early if we need mm. to, which uh, honestly, well, you've probably performed for a few of the people in that room, I suppose, haven't you? Yes, but they never really see me. Too shy. Mm. Well, we have many options available to us, don't we? Oh my god, I got two tickets all on my own. Oh, Edgar, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. How You're a charmer. <laughs> Well, I genuinely think that's very impressive, Dr. Lycoris. I do too. <clears throat> so, I'm sorry, you have enough tickets or? Oh, extra, to them. be honest. Really? Here's our little, here's I'm our bringing little, a date. Oh. Here's, a little, here's the money I owe you from our little side bed if you see it. We sure could use someone like Declan on this assignment. I love assignment. how much faith you all have in me. <laughs> I do. You won that one. Also, don't worry about the costume. <laughs> I also wear a costume at work, it's fine. Well, Dr. Lycoris, um, I, I know that I'm retired from the field, mm -hmm. but perhaps I can be eyes and ears for you at this event as well. Oh, that'd be great. You, it's your decision. <laughs> you outrank me, it's your decision. Well, I'm not good for a scrap, so if oh, things go belly up, uh, I'm going to fade into the crowd. But so we're out in the field again. That should be fun. No, I want to see this. I do too. Mm. You should have seen me in my heyday. Oh, I can imagine. I think you look really elegant now. You'll fit right in. I try. All right, let us slide forward in time then and help me understand, I think I'm getting the picture here. But you have a ticket and yeah. you have a date now. And you have a ticket and you have a date. Um, shopping will be done, I assume. Oh, I was hoping Charlie was just gonna take care of that, but yes. <laughs> okay. I think you have an extra ticket, too. Don't you have three? I do have, I have more than three. So maybe if, if, uh, I, I have an know. emergency one you, for the two of yeah. you in case things go wrong, where it clearly you don't work here, you are guests. Mm -hmm. Right. So. <clears throat> You're gonna good. go in, uh, uh, Malcolm, costume. through the back entrance, mm -hmm. so to speak, and you're going to go in with the fogs. I'm going to go in with the fogs, um, and maybe I wouldn't be opposed to maybe slipping a little something in there, a little Visine-like product in oh their drink. A little dysentery for the evening. <laughs> a little something to get them to leave. <laughs> the night, I love it. 
the the night before or in the the well, hour? Well, I, the, I need them to come in. Mm-hmm. So, yes. you know, maybe in the cocktail hour before the performance begins. Okay. And uh-huh. I think they have no choice but to leave me with the busts and try to make a sale. Look, okay. ethically speaking, I can't tell you how to do this, but if I were to accidentally leave a book somewhere that had that information in it, I, I don't, I can't control what you do. Understood. And I, Liam, will say that you should you totally do that, and it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, they're going to get sick in front of everybody I, who respects, who vaguely pretends to respect yeah. them. Yeah. I, I, oh. I go grab their little champagne drinks and just mm. boop, boop. I mean, nothing terrible, just enough to make it uncomfortable and need to make, go home. Just enough to make it gurgle. It's just yeah. a little bit of the shit. It's just a little bit of the shit. Fine, if that's, if that's all, and if that's what you want, that's fine. Just enough to get them to leave. I just always hope for more. So, <laughs> help me close us out for this half of the game and paint this picture. Malcolm, you arrive earlier than any of your friends. Uh, You show up with Lou and his catering company. You are all supplied with your garb for the night. You are given uh, black slacks, black shirt, uh, a black apron with gold lining all along the edges of it, and a simple black mask that really only covers your eyes and nose. All the wait staff are gonna be dressed in this manner. It's a crew of about 20 servers, uh, and that doesn't include the people who hang back and prepare the food. Uh, You show up a few hours early and um, find your way in and see this place in advance. It is uh, on the drive up, a gorgeous and rare Art Nouveau style manor set on a small hill on the edge of the varnish just on the edge of crossing into the Shrive Line, actually, which is big time ascendancy territory. It is church town in that neighborhood, but we are just on the edge of the varnish. There's delicate gold filigree lining every edge of the building. And um, as the van that you come over in, or I'm sorry, the the truck you come over in, you see a uh, wide open terrace hovering above the entrance. Um, And there's already people sort of setting up tables out front when you arrive. Um, There's large and elegant nouveau stained glass windows on the building, and it's quiet now, but you can see how this place uh, is gonna be the bee's knees later tonight. Anyway, you drive around to the back entrance and begin to set up for the night. You are in on the first and second floor of this three-story opulent building. Uh, Later you and your date and you and your date. Can you please describe for me the uh, garb you are arriving in and the masks you are wearing? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Edgar arrives wearing a nice but plain black suit with a white shirt and a bow tie and the, the, um, most generic and basic thing you could wear to an event like this. Mm-hmm. Along with a mask that covers the top half and has a sort of veil that runs down the left side, okay. covering the left side of his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, it is uh, just plain silver with sort of a silver veil attached and it hangs down and has a sort of like um, one, the left side goes, arcs down, the right side arcs up mm-hmm. into points. You and Miss Manning cut a striking pair because she is also dressed all in black and her shock of black hair with strands of white in it are peeking out behind a sort of raven feathered mask that comes diagonally down across her face covering both eyes and coming down in sort of like a tear curve around her cheek, and it's just barest bit of a little beak on it, and she has uh, a black gown for the night, which also has plumed feathers going out in a splay off of one shoulder. Uh, and you both march up the walk, up the stairs of this building, which is now glowing in the night, and that um, balcony is already got Uh, throngs of people, and the stained glass windows are lit from outside, so now they are beautiful colors of red and green and blue. Uh, There are, obviously, walking up and around you, the most affluent people of this city. You are awash in 
titans of industry and starlets and what look like luminaries uh, in uh, um, the scientific world, uh, all the movers and shakers hidden together here at the Hayden House tonight. You stride up and in. I don't know if you would know this, but I don't really go to parties. <clears throat> it's easy, dear. Stay by me. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> and she walks in. A few moments Easy. later, uh, Leo, you and your plus one arrive. I think you better describe both of you for me. Well, we'll start with Felix. Mm -hmm. Felix is dressed in a, I don't want to quite say modern, but certainly it's clear that someone with some youth and taste may have <laughs> uh, had something to do with this. I need that youth. Uh, yes. <laughs> Give me that um, youth. <laughs> and it is a it is a nice loosely cut suit in a deep green mm -hmm. that seems at the edges and with the tailing uh, with the tailoring to almost um, straight and twist into this nice painted copper, almost a reverse, um, almost as if patina was slowly turning copper rather than copper turning patina you at the edge and the edges. are too much, Talos and Jaffe. You are <laughs> too much. Patina, that's a new, I'm gonna have to always. That's my nickname for you. Patina green that goes, mm -hmm. that goes in the copper rather than copper going to patina green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a wonderful mask that is, that is done up in this very, very uh, dark scarlet velvet mm -hmm. that just covers very, very nicely and comes up into two points, mm -hmm. revealing more of the face than is normal. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, Felix has, has a bit of a, definitely a, a bit of a silver fox thing going on. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, no facial hair or anything, just hair that's been allowed to, it would be a little shaggy if it wasn't always very well sculpted up. Mm -hmm. Very, very dignified. Mm -hmm. um, I have gone, I don't want to say conservative, but knowing that this is a crowd that I might get recognized in, um, I have a uh, black suit with a with a nice deep scarlet red liner. The shirt itself is a, a depending on the on the light as either black or red. It kind of changes the time. Open uh, open collar uh, to just the collar opens just to the edge of a, of a, of a relatively uh, uh, high vest. Nice shoes, and then the mask is a half uh, half face mirror mask of gently cracked glass Good. that completely oh, clover, covers and goes slightly down, and then small beads okay. hang down God. that are black and red that looks like drops of blood that cover just the edges of the of the of the face. I, I think I just shifted into the flare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> amazing. Do not fuck with me. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um. Um, the two of you walk, uh, stride, own these stairs as you march up and into the gilded garden to see what delights await and what danger. We will end with the fogs and their ward as you step out of your ride. The two of them flank you as you march up the stairs. You are a fish out of water. Grimoria, these are the wealthiest, most dangerous people in the city. But you cut an impressive figure, small in stature though you may be, as you stride, perhaps somewhat nervously, up these stairs to march into the wealth of New Fair. People stop and turn and notice the weight that this young survivor carries with her. Some of its theatricality learned. Yeah, the best thing about putting on this performance is that there is an otherness to her that she embraces and can play on. And I think nothing rich people like more than intrigue and a survival story. So, she sort of takes it in wearing the mask of, I don't think she is wearing a mask because she's there to perform, but I think she does have a lot of sort of makeup and she's taken Mrs. Fogg's um, suggestion that she sort of um, 
blend it all out. And so maybe it looks like a mask of makeup, just sort of like how they used to do in the 20s, just like very, very dark um, shadow that yeah. sort of blends into her bruise and makes it look intentional. Um, <laughs> and she sort of takes in the room and clocks people. And I think part of the reason why she's such a good performer is that she can pick up on little details, right? If someone's wearing all black, maybe they've lost someone, she can use that. If someone is there alone um, or with, you know, a, I don't know, like a teenage daughter, like, she might be able to, well, where is your wife? You know, is she passed on? She might be able to use these little parlor tricks in order to impress these people that are not so easily impressed, but easily impressed by this sort of otherworldness that mm. they are interested in. Um, so she uses that to her advantage, but the first thing she does is um, say, I'm going to go grab you to a drink. I'll be right back. And she goes over to, you know, a, a waiter holding, I would imagine, glasses of champagne or mm -hmm. something, and, um, you know, very surreptitiously, she is wearing these large sleeves. Kind of puts a little drop, a little other drop. You look up, and uh, Malcolm is smiling down at you. <clears throat> and she hands him to the fox. Oh. I look forward to a fairy lucrative evening. Take the glasses and cheers to a successful night. A successful night indeed. And they both knock back and Mr. Fogg especially downs the whole drink. And as you turn away from them and stare into the golden array around you, which we will get to in a little bit, you hear a voice off to your side say, oh goodness, that's Grimoria. And you take in that little boost of confidence yeah. and stride into the party. And that is where we will take our break. In the midst of a tempest tossed by both nature and arcane forces, the latest voyage into the heart of Candela Obscura beckons. Answer the call and bring your investigator to life on Demiplane, the sponsor of tonight's episode and creators of the Candela Obscura Nexus. Plot your circle's course using Demiplane's digital reader, featuring the Candela Obscura core rulebook. Stay the course with Demiplane's quick references to the various organizations, phenomena, threats, and more. When you have finally reached your destination, create your own circle or join another while playing in person or online. Fill the role of the face, muscle, scholar, slink, or weird in a matter of minutes using Demiplane's character tools and spend the rest of your available time working towards closing your case. Step into the unknown at CandelaObscuraNexus.com and unlock the mysteries that await with code CANDELA for a 20% discount. Where will your courage lead you in the search for truth and beyond? Delve into a new tabletop role-playing game of investigative horror with the Candela Obscura Core Rulebook using the Illuminated World System by Darrington Press. Roam the turn-of-the-century-inspired setting of the Fairlands 
including the bustling city of New Fair and the ancient ruins of Old Fair below. Assemble a circle of investigators within the paranormal secret society of Candela Obscura. You'll analyze strange and horrifying events, fight back against dangerous phenomena, and contain the bleed that spreads from corruptive magic. Choose from 10 custom character sheets to empower your investigations and explorations. Use tactical intuition and brawn with the soldier specialty. Use your charm with finesse and flair as the magician specialty. Or study and practice mystical arts as an occultist. Explore districts of New Fair, competing organizations, four full assignments, and dozens of example assignments to inspire you. If you choose to brave the role of game master, this guide contains everything needed to pave the way for your Candela Obscura investigators. Offered in both a standard edition as well as an ornate limited edition for collectors, the Candela Obscura core rulebook contains 204 art-filled pages, including maps, items, immersive notes, mysteries, and plenty more to power your very own story. Keep this tome close, for the knowledge obtained may be the key to protecting you, your allies, and the Fairlands. Your friendly neighborhood ambiguous shadowy weirdos here to say cryptic things at you as usual. Are you ready for the third and final season of Midst? We certainly are. Some of you have been waiting a very long time. Good news, the wait is almost over. Midst, man, what the heck? A lot of questionable characters doing incredibly problematic things to each other in a series of increasingly insane escalating circumstances while struggling to follow their warped moral compasses and do what they think is hopefully the right thing. Can the trust get worse somehow? Can Phineas get less worse? How much longer can Lark outrun her past? Are there any objectively good guys in this story other than Lockweed? How can any of these threads possibly be resolved with only one more season to go? And we still don't even know what happened with that dang moon. Are we ever gonna get some answers? Yes. As a matter of fact, we will. The third and final season of Midst unfolds February 14th. Listen to the pure sound experience anywhere you stream podcasts or watch illustrated video episodes on the Critical Role YouTube channel. In the meantime, you can follow us at Midst Podcast or join the fold on Midst.co to get early access to episodes, behind the scenes bonus content, music downloads, digital artwork, and more. Everything's been leading to this. We'll be with you to the end. Do you trust us?
as you take in your surroundings in the foyer of the Hayden House, handing over your tickets, you find yourselves at last entering a resplendent, dimly lit garden of gold. Like some impossible Art Nouveau fever dream. From the filigree on the walls to a forest of sculpted metallic plants and even some trees artfully placed about a series of interconnected chambers full of freshly arrived partygoers. Also, two very large active bars on display down here with guests crowding around them to swoop up libations as well as roving waiters and waitresses with trays of champagne. Right by the entrance from the foyer, a standing placard points guests to the bars here in the front, the actual auction hall in the rear of the first floor, uh, as well as an arrow pointing towards a grand central staircase here in the foyer to the second floor, where one can get a closer look at the art and curiosities in advance of the auction at eight o'clock. Uh, as you're walking in, Leo, um, immediately, you are pretty sure you are coming within three feet of Walter Timley, uh, an older man in his 70s wearing a, a lightly feathered mask, an antique dealer you know, um, and he totters right past you. Doesn't even pay you any mind, goes right off into the crowd. I'm noting what he looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, it is starting to get crowded. There's maybe uh, 50 or 60 people here milling about amongst the bars and uh, here <coughs> in the foyer. You haven't been upstairs yet. Um, we're walking in at about, let's call it 7.10. You have 50 minutes before this auction kicks off and presumably everyone in the building, most of the people in the building, hopefully, all come downstairs and congregate to go into the auction hall. I'll also remind you of uh, Mr. Fogg perhaps um, foolishly sharing details about uh, one of his business associates uh, and his third floor museum. So you have that in the back of your noggins as well. Um, is there a way to identify um, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, Arohai Tamakai? Is he present in the room? Is he hosting? Well, all of you are masked, and everyone around you are masked, even the wait staff and the barkeeps. Um, none of you have ever seen Aroha, Aroha Tamakai. You were told about him before setting C to go uh, close that business deal that went so well. So no, you don't really know what he looks like. Well, there would be two ways to find him immediately, which is either he's not in the room yet because he wants to make an entrance, or he's the person everybody's trying to talk to. Mm. Mm. Have we found each other yet in the crowd? Oh, I see. Well, let me ask you, uh, Malcolm, what's your flight pattern? You're keeping up So I'm job. sort of, I'm sort of, I'm in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of like helping people set up. Mm -hmm. um, kind of making my way around the house in areas where I could be expected, but maybe like kind of looking at areas I'm not. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's supposed to be very quickly. You know, I don't want to give myself away. Right. And they keep offering you trays of champagne to go dole out yeah. when you show up back there. Yeah. And so what I'm doing is I'm sort of kind of like taking my time with the, with the, with the platter of champagne, mm -hmm. lingering around people, conversations. Okay. Um, uh, Leo kind of gave me the idea that, you know, the person of interest might be surrounded by people. Okay. And so I'm kind of looking out for that as well. Okay. Uh, and so I'm just sort of like kind of keeping my ears to the ground, seeing, also seeing if there's people going off in different locations, if there's okay. if there's maybe like a bouncer or some other person that's just kind of guarding okay. a door. That's, that's yeah. a good point to bring up. There is security at this event. The security are uh, men and, and a few women who are dressed in black suits with uh, gold detail, uh, and they are wearing black masks with gold trim around as well. They are unified in their aesthetic uh, and matching the aesthetic of the party. There were several on the steps out front, and you notice one uh, at the door to the auction uh, room in the back. 
Um, occasionally you see one of these uh, men or women walk through the bar area, but they're not really stationed in there. And um, I guess give me a, if you're trying to figure out if you can spot Araha in this crowd, why don't you give me a survey roll? Survey roll, yep. Mm -hmm. That's, I want to burn a drive on this. Okay. Boop. I like this digital, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Candela. That's a candela. Um, okay. So you were here earlier, you were here earlier than your friends, and you've made several loops, and I would say after you ran into Grimoria and supplied her with champagne for her wards, uh, you did another couple rounds, always looking, and f on the most recent, um, as your friends, who you've seen through the crowd, and they've been here for like, um, three or four minutes now, you spot a throng of people moving up the stairs from the foyer up to the second floor, which you haven't even touched yet. And there you do see a, a man uh, on the shorter side, I mean like five, six or seven, um, with like black hair in, and you only catch him from the back in a black suit, but he is surrounded by um, a bunch of people, including a woman uh, right at his elbow, who you can see for a second, she, um, and you only know this because she holds up uh, sort of a, a plat, no, what's a placard? What's the, Program? what am I thinking of? No, clipboard, that's the ah. word, mm. English. Uh, she holds it up to get a better look in the dim lighting as she writes down some sort of note and she walks up behind this man. Uh, and then this crowd, maybe like 10 or 11 people disappear up into the second floor. Mm -hmm. Could be. Okay, I would like to, uh... I would like to investigate. Also, what I want to try to, to uh, also uh, say is that mm -hmm. I might know some of these people who are bounced, since I am a bouncer myself and mm -hmm. work security sometimes. Okay. It wouldn't be impossible that I might it's not know. Impossible. You know, just 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 want to mm -hmm. throw it onto the atmosphere. Um, I am going to find a new because I've just handed out my last glass. I'm mm -hmm. going to find. I'm going to take a tray from a person. Uh, let me lighten your load a little bit, mm -hmm. and I'm going to casually jump myself up to the second floor and see if I might be able to uh, to offer them some champagne. Okay. Uh, you trot up um, the stairs uh, briskly and you get up to the second floor, which this is your first time up here. Um, let me see, let me see. The gold, gilded garden motif continues up here, but now there are beautifully crafted glass lamps dispersed amongst it all to better illuminate the prizes that are up for grab tonight. And you can see in all of these different cubbies and corners uh, that have been made both from the, the rooms that they're in, but also sort of the uh, placing and dis displaying of uh, all of these golden plants, which just like little areas mm -hmm. that are highlighting paintings, both modern and stuff that looks like it dates back to the Halen Renaissance. And objects that surely have come out of uh, antiquity that are here as well. Modern sculpture, um, you see uh, a pair of busts off in one corner of a man and woman who look like they're maybe from uh, the 12 or 1300s, mm. that era. Um, and you make your way around and you do see the, that gentleman with maybe half as many people making his way out onto the balcony right now. Um, as you pass through, you're struck by the intimate vibe up here, of this floor especially, um, the lighting and the lay of the golden forest, and all the couches and love seats scattered about make it really easy to break off in privacy, because it's really dim um, and cozy in a lot of different spots, so it, it's easy to get privacy here, both conversational or otherwise. Um, you follow out onto the balcony, and you see the man stride out and place his hands on the rail with this woman and her clipboard walking up behind him. He just stands there, uh, he shoes somebody away and stands looking out at the city and you come up behind him with your tray and you take in the view too. And I wanna let you know that from here, when you look out up one way uh, off this balcony up the street, you can see to the north, not too far off is the Shrive Line that's the area of New Fair that is where the Ascendancy resides. It is Churchtown, basically. There are 
Gothic architecture and bridges going from tower to tower over there and it's just impressive cathedrals you can see in the distance. And if you just turn to the left, a little farther off, not much farther off, you see Silver Slip, which you're even more acquainted with because that is where the primacy resides. Mm -hmm. The judges, the courts, business, lawyers, everything, the titans of the industry, your family reside in Silver Slip and it strikes you, as you look from left to right, that you are tucked neatly between church and state right now. Mm. Uh, and he is relatively unguarded at the moment with his back to you. Does he seem like he's, when he's looking out, does he seem like he's comfortable or just sort of like, like it's a familiar sight to him, like it's nothing that would rattle him? He seems relaxed and taking in the city. Okay, all right. Okay. And he's with a woman with a clipboard. Is mm -hmm. he just, is he by himself? You know, I mean, There's is, is, people is he, all around Is he you. saying anything to her, I meant to say? Uh, he had on the way over at the moment, he is mm. uh, lost in his thoughts and she is giving him deference, which might lead you to think that she is some sort of a underling or assistant. Got you. Um, but you are not alone out here on the balcony. The many people have come out here to get. I, wanna, I don't want to approach him just yet. I want to kind of keep my eye on him. Um, I don't want to like. I don't want to scare him off too much mm -hmm. because I am, after all, part of the wait staff. Mm -hmm. And if I were to approach him, he he would definitely be snide with me. Mm -hmm. I feel. I'm going to hand out some champagne, casually have a perimeter around where he is, mm -hmm. so I can kind of like still hear if he happens to say You're something. Hanging on the balcony. Hanging on the balcony. Um, lingering. Understood. Mm -hmm. Let's put a pin there mm -hmm. and return downstairs. Uh, below, you and the um, the Fogs, they uh, gather you at your elbow, Mrs. Fogg does, and they're like, come on, we're gonna go upstairs because that's where, that's where the magic happens. Wonderful. She takes you under the elbow and they begin to march you up these, this grand staircase up to the second floor and you find yourself in this dimly lit, um, very conducive for the kind of work you do. Right. Uh, space. And you guys sort of float about looking at all the uh, different things that are up for grabs, paintings, portraits. Um, and eventually they hover you in front of these two busts right. um, that they are, they donated to the auction, or not donated isn't the right word, that they have contributed to the auction. It is here for profit. Aroha is the red hand. Yeah. which you all know, um, everything here is for profit. Yeah. Well, hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully uh, we can get a buyer. Is there anything you can do with these? I mean, normally... Oh, yes, I've already thought of it. I have a whole performance ready for him. What's, um, the, what's the play? Tell well, me the play uh, I think, what, well, you know, it's uh, you said it was... And I, I'm talking to our game master. Sure. They're the 12th century busts, you said? Uh... I think or I'm these are just like a different. Oh, a different bus. Okay, these um, busts, yeah. great. That's even better. I have a plan. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we acknowledge at the top of the performance, you know, that r these rooms are filled with antiquities. What makes these two busts special? Well, they sort of floated up from the chasm, you see, and I'll put on a different voice as usual. And what's interesting about these busts is that they witness the fall of a civilization and they're imbued with the pain of two sisters who were crushed to death, but not before trying, is this not working for you? I, I, I don't know shit about history, oh, but oh, that I sounds do. good. Okay, great, yeah. Um, I could also throw in something else. You know how in olden times, um, you know, uh, daughters would, uh, fathers would, you know, no? No, no, we're good, I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'm gonna make the rounds. I'm gonna find a mark, okay? Okay. I'm gonna find us a fish. Great. Stay close. I'll be and, right uh, here. You'll be ready to go, yes. and when I get back here, I wanna be able to see you. Okay, All yeah, right? of course. May I ask, who is that man on the balcony? Uh, why do you ask? Well, he seems pretty important. Well, he's the one footing the bill for the party. He's the host. Ah, oh, yeah. Great. Why, what do you ask? What do you know about him? I don't know anything about him. Just in my line of work, I've learned to sniff out what's real and what's not. You know, 
I'm happy to have you in my house. I'm happy to be there. But know your place, all right? Of course. You work for us. Absolutely. I don't need you asking a million questions. I don't need you listening in on my conversations. Yes. All right? Absolutely. We have a good thing going. A great thing. Here. I won't disappoint you. All right. Come on. They wander off into the party, and you are shoulder to shoulder with the illuminaries of the city on your own. Is there anything you want to do in this moment while you have your time? Yeah, I kind of would like to find a way to catch the attention of the gentleman on the balcony, but in a very kind of sly way. Um, maybe make some sort of an ooh and ah commotion where he's <laughs> forced to turn around and see what the what it is. Um, I don't know if that's picking several people and maybe doing a reading of some sort, or and or, and with the reading maybe um, doing a little magic. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you want to maybe uh, suss this out with you. You want to go out onto the balcony so that you're because this is a big sprawling. Oh sure, if it's spot. a big spr Yeah. So you make your way to the balcony. Yeah. And. If you want to do uh, a reading, I assume you have cards on you because that makes sense for you. Yes. And then the goal is to just get his attention? Yeah, I think it's, um, the goal is to cause enough like sort of fanfare. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I'm there, if I hear like a, oh, mm -hmm. and maybe he turns around and kind of takes, it takes her in, but not anything that she's willing to meet his eye or anything, just to kind of um, maybe see if he will take the bait. Um, and one way she could do that is, while still staying close to the fogs, you know, still staying close enough to them where they, you know, feel like she's just kind of working for them, okay. um, find a group of people that seem receptive, maybe like a group of socialites or something sure. that are there and are willing to have their cards read. Let's go give it a whirl. Yeah. Okay, you uh, step your way out of the inside crowd and out into the balcony and take in the city lights. And, uh, the distance and the stars overhead. And there are lots of little gaggles of uh, socialites out here. There is a, sort of a younger table and a, sort of a more uh, antiquated, shall we say, uh, group. <laughs> Spinsters. Who are you going for? Um, I think I'm gonna go for the younger group because I think okay. they're probably easier to impress. Okay. They are a bunch of spoiled rich kids in real refinery and great masks and they are probably a little too uproarious and laughing their asses off at mm. some joke that one of them just told. Um, and they're there before you. How do you get their attention? Um, I think I get their attention by saying Hello. I think you're going to find that I have information that might be interesting to you regarding a husband. What was that last part? A husband. A husband? Mm -hmm. You're saying this to a woman then? Yeah, to, okay. to, to any of the socialites <laughs> there that might be of that age, Great. that might be interested in So uh, you come in and, and whisper this almost at the ear of two of these people in this group as this laughter is done. I'm gonna pick the, the sort of like um, most homely looking girl. Uh, Okay, okay. Um, the circle sort of splits open and uh, a woman with uh, like sort of sandy blonde hair that is like bob length turns around. <coughs> You're gonna what now? I have a sense about you. You're so special. And I don't think people treat you like you are. <laughs> she looks at the group around her. There's a guy who looks clearly like a, a, a young uh, sort of a finance hopeful guy with sort of a close cropped brown hair, pretty handsome, like square jaw. Mm. Oh, this should be good. Hey, check it out. We're about to uh, see a little something. Now who's brave enough to have their cards read? Hmm. Well, I'm not scared. Great, have a seat. She Ace. sits down. Starts laying out cards. Oh. What is it? I sense a very deep loyalty in you. But no one sees it. You're very underappreciated. She sort of steals a glance at the 
young banker, and then I'm back. But not for long. I sense a man has already come into your life. It doesn't really say that, does it? It does. The cards don't lie. But I'm getting a voice in my head. A grandmother? An aunt. I have a grandmother and an aunt. Anyone, oh, who's maybe passed on. Yeah, my Aunt Millie died oh, yes. three years ago. I've seen an M. An M, she says. That's crazy. <gasps> I think. It's bad? No. I think the man is here with us today, tonight, in this room. And he's a man of great wealth, or maybe soon to be wealth, of great importance. Yes? I think you're onto something. I think all you have to do is be yourself. Another voice in the circles like, you don't really believe any of this, do you? Shut up, Gracie! <laughs> Gracie. Oh, Gracie. Oh, Gracie. Oh. I'm so, so sorry. Gracie's like, what's wrong with me? I, I can't. I just, I, I. And she sort of like takes one of her little smoke bombs, <laughs> like <laughs> puff, puffs it. I've got a message for you, Gracie. The smoke starts to billow up out from under the table. They have no idea where it's come from. Everyone starts to get a little quietly low key freaked out. Be kind to your friends. They kind of, they erupt in, um, some of them in nervous laughter, but most of them just going, oh, oh, that is so weird. And everyone around on the balcony starts to sort of turn and look at the spectacle that's happening happening in this corner. And then Malcolm, and of course you, Grimoria, you see this man turn at the balcony to take in what's going on, and you get a good look. He's got a, a jet black cat mask that matches deep black hair. Hmm. Uh, they, comes down to about there on the back. He is wearing a tight black suit with a gold tie, gold gloves. Um, and then the, the woman with him turns as well. She's wearing sort of more of a standard carnival mask and wearing like a checkered red and purple vest over her suit. I think Gugumori sort of looks at, sees him, the corner of her eye, and, and she's been waiting for this moment. I think she's sort of prepared a kind of, like taking into account the, the sort of vision of green that emanated from the bones, mm -hmm. um, has prepared maybe sort of like a kind of gas or something that could uh, achieve that effect. And I think she turns away from the group really quickly and as she does, she like lets this sort of trickery of green sort of emanate from her robe, just enough for him to kind of see. I think it's certainly plausible that you have one of your little smoke bombs stained green. Yeah. So and green I think smoke trails out from nothing the too crazy. Mm -hmm. It's not as loud as and kind of boisterous as the other way, but just enough to catch his attention. She's b banking on the fact that he knows what this sort of magic and this bleed looks like, mm -hmm. and, and she really wants him to take that in. Well, I'll say he turned to see all the ruckus, and then he's already starting to turn away, and green uh, <laughs> mist starts to waft out of your robe, and he does like a gentle little double take. He seems like a pretty cool customer. Yeah. She goes back to the fox. He starts to um, walk away from the rail through the balcony. Um, and Malcolm, I'm gonna say that you are close enough to hear um, the assistant say to him, Araha, where did you want the Lefoy put for now? In the back is fine. And um, have them open three more cases of champagne. I'm, I'm going to dip downstairs for a bit. I'm gonna check on the VIPs and move things along. Oh. And another thing, 
Someone spotted the fogs on the premises. I am at the end of my rope with Oliver. He's a drunk and a moron. If he sticks his nose in my business one more time, he's gonna get a one-way ticket to the vast chasm. Keep him away from me. No exceptions. He strides away from her Shit. into the crowd inside. What's she doing? What's who doing? His assistant. Oh, she starts to scribble a few uh, notes and she heads off the balcony as well, but she starts to move uh, off to the right when she enters and goes in a different direction than the boss. Let's pause you guys for a moment because we have more people downstairs. I want to know what you and Miss Manning are doing right now. So Sorry. as we're in the crowd having, oh, I'm holding a drink as you would do, I see uh, Grimora walk up the stairs leaving with her employers. Mm -hmm. Miss Manning, I do have a question. Yes. It does seem a little odd, and I know that everyone joins Candela of their own volition for one reason or another. I'm just curious why you let Miss Grimora join at such a young age. It did cause me pause for quite some time. It was a very weighted decision I made. But her abilities are so rare, Edgar. There is so much promise in her. I, I don't think I've met anyone as in tune with herself and with everyone around her as uh, Grimoria. Mm. And I was looking at it as an investment in her and the future. Mm. I also, in the early days, tried my best to uh, steer her away from the thicker work. Uh, the boat, an obvious misfire. That wasn't your fault. Um, that's, I'm not judging, I was just curious. I'm quite fond of Grimoria, and I just, if this isn't a, some, I, I know why I'm here, but it's not something I necessarily wish on people, so. I guess more than anything, I wish she didn't have those gifts. But this is beside the point of why we're here. Why did you all of a sudden decide to come on this little outing? I suppose I feel invested. <laughs> there are a lot of threads here that are pulling at each other and Mr. Murphy is so important to me. Hmm. I, I can't help but sense some sort of thread here. I... Between what happened to him and this item or these? Well, I'm more thinking of his circle hmm. and he. I also suppose I just, on the lark, <laughs> thought it would be good to get my feet wet again. I did love it in my day. You are right, though. It, it is a lot to ask of one so young. And I have never stopped struggling with the choices I've made and have to make, especially as a lightkeeper. Mm, I can't imagine. She seems to be handling it fine. Better than some of us. Oh, wait a tick. Would you wait here a moment? Yes. I'm just going to go over there. 
and she squeezes your elbow and walks. We're on the first floor still. She walks off towards one of the bars and uh, up to sort of a, a, a girthier, tall, broad-chested uh, man with sort of a buzzed side of hair on the side of his head and a, just a mustache, a thick mustache, uh, which you see because he is removing an elephant mask to take a swig <laughs> of a glass and then he puts it back and um, you can see just the bottom of his jaw. And uh, Zora gets up to him and you can just barely hear over the tinkling of glasses her saying, I thought it was you. Hello, Reginald. Hmm? Zora, is that you? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> I dare say you weren't expecting me to be here this evening. Hello. <laughs> um, well, uh, no, I, I'm here solo. I'm stag, as it was. Um, why are you here? I know why you're here, Reginald. Did you make your bid yet? I did. I don't think it was enough. Hmm. Well, I dare say I'm relieved because it's not going to be safe in some warehouse here in the city. What you're trying to get your mitts on. Speak for yourself, we do a very good job downtown. Where are they? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Stop playing stupid, you big loaf of an elephant. Where are they? <sighs> well, you're not going to get in there, up on the second floor, in the rear. If you walk away from the balcony, off to the right, there's a bit of a hole down there. But the host is bringing his bidders up. You can't just get up there, two red hand at the door. Strangle the life out of you, you're not going up there. Yes, I suppose you're right. Well, it's good to see you, Lumpy. <laughs> you used to like it. She chins his elephant jaw, wanders away and comes back to you. Friend? Sure. Let's call it that. Uh, I think I have an idea where we can follow the trail. Uh, second floor, rear of the second floor, somewhere off uh, to the right of the balcony, he says. Good to know. Where's the group? Where is Leo? Where is Leo? <laughs> Leo, uh, Leo and his date have wandered over to the bar, picked up a drink, something that's complicated looking but not quite as alcoholic as it looks. Um, Felix, Felix has an understanding of what's going down, so I, mm. I've already put forward the notion that I may have to separate for a little bit. God forbid something goes strange, feel free to say that you don't know who I am, whatever you need. Or that I just asked you to be the plus one for a thing. This can be a you know, first date. We're not date. the kind of men to ask questions like that. Bless you. <laughs> I'm on a bit of a cland clandestine's mission. Uh, there was an old man who came in through here, old, into the 70s. Uh, I don't know if you've ever met Walter, maybe you haven't. Um, I'm going to quickly try and track down an old friend. I will find you in just a few minutes. All right, I might go on a clandestine mission of my own. <laughs> Cheers to that. Let's see who, who does better. He wanders off into the crowd. Are you off Cheers. in search of Walter? I saw which direction Walter was going. Yes, he was staying on the first floor as well. Uh, he wandered off towards the bar earlier, so you're off to find him? Uh, at least see if there's, it's possible to, to hit him in the crowd. If not, I'm keeping okay. an eye out for people who I know or at least okay. know of. So you start moving to the crowd, trying to get eyes on Walter again. You make it about 15 feet when uh, uh, a young woman, all uh, in, in gold herself, like a gold uh, stylized butterfly mask and sort of a gold shimmery dress and just a hair of sort of um, gold uh, blonde ringlets, comes and pokes her finger in your chest going, what are you doing here? I knew it was you. <laughs> you start to realize you are looking at your niece. Oh, ah, niece. What are you doing here? You never go out like this. Oh, I do go out like this. You're just never here, are you? I go to all the parties. You are a bad liar. 
That's fair. I'm really not going to be able to fight that. Who, what are you doing here? What are you looking for? Are you bidding on anything? Are you being bid on anything? I don't know. <laughs> I'm hunting for a different prey than paintings, Leo. Sculpture? No, I'm fucking with you. I know exactly what you mean. Did you come here as someone's pl plus one and you've decided to abandon them, or are you? Oh, we came in a gaggle. Bentley's upstairs. Oh, uh, no. I think I saw him on the balcony a few minutes ago. Oh, no. Um, Walter Tinley's here, the old coot. Yes, I'm well I don't aware know why. of that. Is there any other family here? Uh, um, <laughs> I think that Auntie said she was going to skip it. Um,. She looks really uncomfortable for a second and then sort of scans the crowd. <laughs> Leo. Don't, um, you don't have to say a name, just, just, yes. How bad? Your dad's here. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> is that, how bad is that? <laughs> well, we'll see, won't we? It will be a very interesting conversation. The first in a very long time. Oh I appreciate God. the heads up. You will not be. Do I want to be around for it? You know, I think you think you want to be around for it, but honestly, perhaps you could use the character if you happen to watch it. Make a sway. <sighs> a low stakes sway roll. Oh. <laughs> Candela. Candela. Yes. All right, I'll buy in. <laughs> Hold a candela now. That's nice. She sort of pouts. All right. I can make you a deal. Uh, I hear rumors that you flirt at a, at a reasonable level, certainly college level. <laughs> what can I say your reputation gets around? Uh, I am trying to get a couple special things from the auction. What's your poison? I mean, that which doesn't kill you, yada yada. If you know somebody who can help get me up to the auction, or, because I know you're you, the auction. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about, Leo. Well, I think better of you, apparently, than I should. Well, if you could get me into the auction, or now that I've put that into your head, Okay, I'm gonna go see if I can figure out what the hell you're talking about. Mm. Good luck. And she disappears <laughs> into the crowd. She's um, gonna be irritated by that for hours. Mm. Fuck. Father, all right. Back to you, Malcolm. Now. Where are you at this point? So the gentleman has walked off the balcony and talked of going down but to the first floor. Where are you headed right now? Um, part of me kind of wants to go to the assistant and give her a little flirt. Okay. And see if I can squeeze some information as to where the artifact is. Okay. So with your tray of champagne, you exit the balcony and curve around to the right, and you make it about 10 or 15 steps when a very tall, broad man in a uh, very colorful purple and green and gold mask that covers about this much of his face steps in front of you and puts your hand, his hand on your chest. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me right now? Oh, I'm sorry, I just... You're staring I, into your brother's eyes. Yeah. I was told that I should pay special attention to the lady who just went away, that I should give her whatever she needs, drinks. Stop talking. Stop. What the fuck are you doing here? Wait, what is this? Reginald? What are you doing? Are you here to embarrass me? What is this? Oh my God, no. You're waiting I, at tables? I don't see you for months. And this is how you get into my business? Course, what are you doing party. here? Listen. Don't worry why I'm doing this party. I'm trying to make a little extra cash on the side. I can assume why you're here. Is anyone else from the family here? First make a, uh, oh no. First make a sway roll. <laughs> Good old brother Desmond. All right, I'm going to burn a drive on this. Okay. This is gonna cause me trouble if I don't. It's your yearbook quote at this point. <laughs> oh shit. I can like totally blow my whole cover. Candela. She's burn a roll. Every time I look over there, it's just hateful. <laughs> <laughs> you just got
got one too. <laughs> oh, and I enjoyed mine. I don't know if he feels it. Yeah, anymore. yeah, he's not. It's he different. doesn't feel a thing. <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. You're waiting tables now. Is this altruism? I don't have to explain What's myself to you. You made it very clear where I stand with the family. You have what you want, and I have what I want. A little bit of freedom to do what I want as I please. I don't answer the family anymore. I don't answer to you anymore. I'm working, and I was told to pay special attention to the lady who is now out of my view. I just don't understand. I, I can't with you. Listen, you had everything this family wants, and you're throwing it away, and now you're here tonight. You see, Desmond, that's always been your problem, is that you've never tried to understand where I come from or how I feel or what I want to do. It's always been what you want to do and what you, how you approach the world. I don't approach the world like you, Desmond. I'm not interested in all the power and all the prestige that you seek out. It doesn't mean that much to me. Now, what does mean a lot to me is keeping this job and make sure I don't get fired from this job. That's fine. I can't waste my time with you all night. I have to make the rounds, all right. grease the wheels. Well, let me know where you are. Perhaps I'll bring you a brandy or two. You're a very small fish in this stream now, Malcolm. <laughs> Best you follow the current downstream. He grabs a glass off the tray and just walks off. Well, it's a good thing I know how to swim, isn't it? <laughs> uh, disappears into the crowd. Uh, she's not immediately visible anymore. Shit. <sighs> Do I have an idea of where she went off to? I would say that you kept eyes on her long enough to see that she veered to the right when she left the I want to kind of, I want to trail her. Okay. I want to trail her. Well, you don't see her, but you're going to follow along in the, the direction you think, think she, she went. Is. So <sighs> let's do, a, give me a, a survey roll. It's okay. low stakes. I'm not going to burn a drive on this one. I'm going to five. Five. Okay, so you uh, wander in and stop to make sure that people are getting supplied with champagne as you go, and you wander through uh, several little stations, passing uh, a painting of a, a nude woman on a chaise, and then past uh, one of a, a field with a, a man lying on his back, staring up into the sky, and some sort of a ruin in the rear past that. And you get to what feels like a, sort of like a dead end back here. The you get off the balcony, it kind of winds and winds and winds, and then it stops. Um, she's not here, but what is here, excuse me, about 40 feet away, are a man and a woman standing at the bottom of a thin set of black stairs, and they are in black masks with gold trim, black suits, golden gloves, standing just sort of watching the room. Mm. But she's not here. And there's like, and they're, and they're guarding, they're guarding that door. They are for sure got their backs to the bottom, the foot of these stairs. Interesting. I think I'm gonna go back and I wanna relay this information back to, uh, to, to the team. Okay. Um, you are also down to one glass of champagne. That's yeah, why. so I think it's a good time. It's a good time for me to refill. Mm -hmm. I would like to offer the two guards actually a glass of champagne and see how they receive that. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, you can do that while making another sway roll. Very low stakes. Please don't burn any drive on it. Sway with me. <laughs> keep my drive. Stay alive. Oh! They're gonna throw it in my face. I have myself a three. A three. <laughs> It it's low stakes. It's not that intense that you just get there and the woman, uh, the woman kind of cranes her head a bit, but the guy on the other side just goes, mm. doesn't even speak. He just gives you the hand. Mm. Huh. Perhaps another time. And you wind away into the crowd. Um, mm. Grimoria. Uh, Mr. Fogg comes storming out onto the balcony, looking all over the place, sees you, comes walking over to you. He's like, come on, I told you to wait. By the busts. <sighs> Cynthia is in the shitter. Come with me. <laughs> oh, the what? The lube, the, the, the water closet. Oh, sure. 
I think She's I might not have feeling well. Oh, that's too bad. I think I might have procured some interested parties. I was telling them all about the bust. Oh, uh, I have someone waiting where you were supposed to be oh, now. Great. Let's go. Uh, he drags you over, and there is a, a couple, a man and a woman, uh, who are in their like late 60s, and the man has a tight little bow tie and a, a little almost like mechanical looking mm-hmm. mask with like little gears glued on, <laughs> and she is wearing um, uh, what looks like peacock feathers mm. streaming out from the side mm. of hers, uh, and she has like long gloves on, and they're uh, just waiting, looking uh, sort of appraising these two statues. I don't know, I, I don't know where we would put it. Oh, I think it could go maybe in the, the front sitting room or, or the back sitting room. She overhears this. Mm-hmm. I think you have the perfect place for it. Oh, is, is this her? Grimoria, please. Hello. Reveal the invisible. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you s- both seem so artistic. Oh. You you might really appreciate, this accent's all over the place, but pretend it's like a really is exotic. <laughs> you yeah, had me so They don't know. Okay, they more, well, anyway, <laughs> um, for the, well, those watching useless. at home. Yeah. Um, I love going to the theater. <laughs> I can tell. I bet your favorite is <laughs> Hamlet. <laughs> Macbeth. I don't know those names. Are those new plays? Yes. Um, now, these busts, they're not just ancient busts. I want to interrupt just to tell you that Mr. Fogg is watching behind them and smiling, and there's like sweat just <laughs> glistening on the side of his face. This is bubble gut. Um, she gives him a display. Um, uh, in fact, they're, they're, they hold in them you see, they're entombed. The star-crossed lovers. That's fascinating. How do, you, how do you know? I feel it. In fact, let me tell you a story about these star-crossed lovers. They came from dueling families. Uh, once upon a time. You think you hear the sound of a wet fart. <laughs> <laughs> In fair Verona. Oh my god. And <laughs> she proceeds to say the plot of Romeo and Juliet. Right. Um, Which doesn't exist in this world. <laughs> no, but she knows she it. So it's an original she story an original of story. Old Fair. <laughs> Somewhere yeah. out of the bleed, infinite, uh, infinite monkeys have put together a, a script. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or it's like the version of, right? Like, you know, it, it's something slightly familiar to them. If they really are theater goers, they might, if they've thought about it too much, they might have noticed the recycled yeah. story. But she's essentially telling them the, the story of star cross lovers. Do me a favor, as you're giving me this uh, vibe, will you roll a sway roll for me? Yes, and I will. In addition to the great I, stuff that you're saying. Am I, am I anywhere near you this? You for sure can be. I'm, I would like to assist in the sway roll. Thank you. So you're off looking, you're on, looking around and wondering if dad's around and you stumble and upon I this. And I stumble upon this and I see kind of what's happening and I walk up and I begin to just sort of get next to the couple mm-hmm. and I get enthralled. Mm. Go on. That's a four on the gilded die. Okay. Oh. That was including my extra? Oh. You have an extra die. Yeah, well, extra I gave die. you one more die. Oh, shit. Just have one more die and roll, roll it in there. Just Don't touch just the roll. ones you rolled already. Yeah, just, okay. just roll the extra. Candela! There we are. Oh. <laughs> Yahtzee. Candela. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I'm so sorry. Go on, go on, don't mind me. In old what? Ferrona, where we live. Yes, an old Ferrona, <laughs> where we have seen. Oh, brought it home. And, um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, she's, uh, And then she wakes up from this poison to see her dead lover laid across her tomb. You have the heart of a poet. I'm only channeling what the spirits tell me. And how how much for these two? I'm so sorry. Oh, I could never put a price. Mr. Fogg, maybe you can assist Um, these buyers. you know, we could discuss what's. F- Will you excuse me? And he just starts um, okay. duck waddling yeah. away uh, into the crowd, oh, and he's gone. Okay, so then I, what I'll do is that I'll think of maybe a price that I'd heard. Yes. I don't. I don't really know, and I'll just very kind of coyly. Um, 
this isn't really my part of things, but you see my employer seems to be indisposed, is that a word? Mm -hmm. At the moment, um, writes down a figure, slips it, or actually kind of sees who wants to take it. Oh. Oh, this is a steal. We'll see you in the auction I'm house. Going, I'm going for a, for a hook for, for, to grab oh, the no, paper. No. To grab the paper? I want to see, I, want to see, I, I will I'm double it. I will. Paper. Oh, yeah, you got oh. rid of it? No, 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 I was oh. like, do we have them roll? It's oh. a piece no, of paper. No, 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 just, You've just got it. Go. Mister, oh, mister, I think I've got just the thing for you. If you, I mean. We'll see you in the auction house. These are ours. We've called, no, these are I'm, ours. I'm handing it back, it's too rich for me. It's oh, too rich for I'll me. I'll show you something, something else. I w yeah. As I'm, they walk I'm away, yeah. they're walking away from you, you hear the woman say, man, you are so virile. <laughs> Disappear into the crowd. <laughs> okay, so we've made the sale. Well, was still like, well oh. it's an auction. It's an auction. Oh, that's this so, is for okay. people up here to like get excited. Get excited about it. They them. got excited. Okay, okay. Oh, thank so you. So did Mr. Fogg. Thank you, Mr. I know you were doing very well. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. no problem. It's, uh, yes. Oh, do we have any clue as to what's happening? Any updates? What it would be worth, do you think, to... If you could have... Mm, if you had the opportun opportunity to maybe put this to rest, but you had to do the most unpleasant thing you could possibly think to do, would you do it? Uh, but you put it to rest forever? Well, at the very least, maybe make whatever it is that is we dealt with on the boat go away. Oh, I would say do it. I can help. My father's here. Oh. My father's here. Oh no, how does that make you feel? Well, we haven't spoken since, you know, yes. since before. Since before. Off in the distance, you hear a bell ring, and you hear uh, a man's voice call out, 15 minutes till the auction, 15 minutes. Oh, no. Um, well, I, I will assist you in any way I can. I, I understand that it's a really hard thing to do, but it might be worth it. Fuck. Fuck. I am going to... People are starting to get together for the auction. Some people are starting, many mm. people are like heard that and just went back to their conversations, but some people are starting to grab a bag or fetch a person and start making their way off the second floor. I, have we seen where the third floor is going? Or where, where the only, entrance to the third floor? Only Malcolm has mm. seen those stairs and he, it, in this pinprick of a moment, is in the kitchen reloading champagne. I'd like to know where you and Zora are. I believe we were going to head up to the second floor floor okay. and having acquired the information of where that door was. Okay. So as, as they're having this the conversation and you are wondering well. like where is that that uh, uh, Edgar appears at your shoulder with Zora. Excellent. Hello you too. Hello. We're looking for the third for the extra auction access. Well we have I want to try to make my way back over once I load up my tray I want to try to get my way back over there so I can deliver the information. Okay well let's just say then yeah that many things are happening at once, and you went back to the kitchen, you got another tray of champagne and came out. Um, you intersect about 30 seconds after this group has intersected. So they're into their conversation, Edgar is mid-conversation, and then you walk up offering champagne. Hello, friends. Uh, hello. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Zora kindly was able, er, was able to find out the information we were looking for and that there's a door down at the end of this hall to the right. It apparently leads to where we need to be. It's fascinating uh, information, because I happen to know where that door is. I can actually lead you there. One point of clarification, set of stairs. Set of stairs, sorry. No worries, no worries. Um, but there are, it is guarded, as far as I'm aware. There's about two guards, one male, one female. Do you have some sort of list? Is somebody wearing anything? Looking for anything that yeah, like a have, pin or something. Have we noticed a lapel or anything yeah. like that? Yeah, um, like a little ribbon that might what? indicate people that are invited to the third floor. From, from, from what third Zora floor, no. said, the man himself is bringing the invited buyers in there himself. Oh, fudge. Mm. We're gonna have to infiltrate. Unless someone knows one of the buyers and might be able to snag a, snag a well. buck. I have an old friend, but he's already been up and down. Whom? Uh, Reginald, he is uh, 
from the OUP and uh, evidently did not tickle Aroha's fancy with his offer. Mm. Do we see Aroha anywhere? Is, or is he gone? Make a survey roll. <coughs> oh. Just survey. do one. Just do one. It's Come low on, You're not going to fall out a window if you fail. Two! Oh. Two. <laughs> still pretty crowded in here, so okay. you'll sort of scan around and don't see him. I'm, I'm still looking for Walter or mm-hmm. d- dear old dad. Okay. We have to be so downstairs in 15 survey again. minutes. Yeah, survey. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna take the low one and roll because the one's supposed to be gilded. Okay. Uh, I, I gilded five. That actually doesn't matter because I'm filled up on that one anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, you, while they're conversing, are just sort of slowly spinning around up here, looking, looking, and you see, at the last second, an older man uh, with a um, like an upside down moon. Uh, mask, and it's a very severe looking, uh, and, and it comes down to here on the front. There's a little dip down. Uh, disappearing from view and moving uh, off towards the direction you recognize as the stairs. Interesting. That man is going in the exact direction where those two guards I spotted are, uh, are actually in front of that door, which Shit. I believe holds our treasure. Take one. I'm going to take the champagne I'm currently drinking. I'm going to down it and grab another and start walking in that direction. Okay. Uh, you beeline it away from the group and just hook around and start again. It's a bit of a twisting uh, journey to get there through a couple of rooms. Um, yeah. You almost pass your father. You don't make it to stairs and you find him sitting alone in a corner uh, with a brandy in his hand, just sort of staring at the floor. It looks in this brief moment like he is just not into it and has found a moment alone. Does not notice you for the moment. Mm. You look like shit. (laughs) Oh, for fuck's sake. Mm, 23 years, that's the first words I've gotten out of you. Mm. Hello, son. Raymond? Right. I've heard that you have been wanting to talk, but I was assuming it was just shit from people who are trying to make something happen that's not going to. Who fed you that bullshit? (laughs) You can guess. Never stopped trying. Mm. I, I will believe that you believe that. Haven't I done enough? Mm. Haven't I given you a pile to sit on for your own disposal? Don't question it, don't interfere, don't get in your way. I don't question, I don't interfere, and I certainly do not get in your way. Mother's sake, you act as if I were the one who wounded you and not the other way around. For what it's worth, no, I blame Mother. I just blame you for going along. Finally looks directly in the eye. Well, drink it in. You won't have this view for much longer. If it makes you feel better, I'm not here for you. I have something upstairs that I was hoping to mm, take out of circulation. I'm gonna ask you to make a read roll. Read. I'm gonna play with this. Hold on. I wish I could assist, but no, we're no, so no. far. No, no, no. Oh, this is a... I'm going to pull a drive for this one. Reroll. Uh, I'll take it. It's a five. Ooh, nice. 
Actually, um, hold on. Um, I'm, I actually, I'm gonna use Sweet Talk. I'm gonna do an extra, I'm gonna add one more die just to see, which is also a gilded die. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you stare him down for a solid 10 seconds and he just eyeballs you back. And you dropped that comment and you slowly realize and believe that he has no idea what you're talking about. And he stands. You don't know where you are, do you? Oh no. Make this the last time. Doesn't matter, I'll be dead in six months anyway. And he turns and walks back the way you came. Um, and they don't know what he looks like, so that's the end of that. I'm as I'm just going to try and whisper as he walks by. I'll be six months more than half my life while fucking done. And I'm gonna go sit down where he was and just finish my fucking drink. Cold blooded. I just have to draw attention to the visual of you finding your old man with a, a drink in his hand, and then he leaves and you fill in the exact yeah. same. Mwah. <laughs> um, back with the rest of you. Anything? Everyone's going to get called into the auction soon, in a few minutes. There's nothing we can really do until then. I don't particularly have a plan of infiltration, but it's not really what I do. But Malcolm. I do have an idea, but it's gonna be messy. That's not why we're here. <laughs> we specifically said to not be messy. I, please, I do not want you to be messy. Yes. We are not trying to cause a scene. It could be messy. Again, no. It might be our only course of action. I'm thinking I distract that guard at the door. Two, 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 two guards? No, one guard. The guard that's big enough for me to fill his clothes. And I get him somewhere, and I want to take over his position. Okay. Leo, um, while you're sitting there, mm. uh, Aroha comes through the room, out from where you assume those stairs are. And he is with a very tall, red-headed woman. Uh, you can tell that she's older. She's in a silver dress with a wide frill and a very nouveau mask. Um, and he is, he's placing a hand on her shoulder as they pass, and he shakes, he, with his gold hand, he, he shakes hers and uh, says, we'll be in touch, thank you. And uh, they walk a little bit further. And then he uh, wanders back in front of your vision and disappears wait, from wait, you. Wait, who was this? So Aroha okay, and a Aroha, stranger, yeah. a, a tall, older, red-headed woman, mm -hmm. came together, shaking, did a little handshake about 15 feet away from you, and then traveled back on out towards the, uh, the balcony and the main part of the second floor. And then Aroha returned into your view and returned the way he came. And I didn't have time to... to Register enough to that would have probably been way too much. What the hell is happening? Right, you you just went yeah. you just went through what you went through, and you're down. You're on your third drink, possibly. Yes, and uh, you just sort of ogled it as it happened, and only sort of sunk in by the time he was passing back. I have an idea. Is there other than I'll I'll let you have your plan, but if we're doing this without. A mess. Is it possible we wait for the auction to start? And we ask our friend Leo if it's possible for him to leverage his family name to get us past those guards. They <clears throat> obviously would know who he was. And he's here on behalf of his family, using maybe his brother's name, but the last name is what's important, to get through the doors to look at the artifact. And even though, and his, and because our, the uh, host of this party is busy with the real auction, that we've been sent up just to take a look at it while he's busy. I think the host is showing off the artifact. He is, but 
He is the host of this party, and the actual public event is about to happen. There's no doubt he's going to need to be there, at least for a little bit. Your bell ringing in the distance. 10 minutes till the auction, 10 minutes. Here's a problem with that plan. It's not messy enough? No. This is a extremely secretive auction, and you're gonna have to give a little more proof than that, I believe. If it comes down to repping a family's name, there's gonna have to be proof that you can actually do that, that they might ask at the door. And from what I saw, those guards aren't going to be uh, an easy sway, so to speak. Now, unless we find another way in the back, do we know if that room leads to anything? Is there any way we could sneak in that room? Which, the one that... The one that... The, that, 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 you, do we, do I have... Do how, 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 the, the lay of the land of the house. Do all we? you know at this point is that Mr. Fogg, old Mr. Shits himself, had uh, mentioned a museum of sorts on the third floor. You've only been as high as the second. And you only have had eyes on this set of stairs with two guards at the bottom of it. And this is on the third floor. You are on the second okay. floor third right floor now. Floor. The stairs lead to the third floor. Third floor. And have we seen Aroha come into the room yet? Uh, with the woman in red. The he didn't make it out as far. You guys never saw him in this last sure. five minute period. Leo saw him pass in front of his vision and then 30 seconds come back. So, oh, so he's back. Okay. Assumedly, he w walked with a client. Yeah. Sent them on their way and then returned from whence he Shit. came. I mean, I, I, if I can get to him, maybe I can do something. But I haven't seen him in the last. This is Leo's territory, as I, far as I'm concerned. At, at this point, I've got my my shit together. I'm standing up and I'm walking in the direction of of yeah of which the uh, stairs of I, well I saw yeah I saw the well I saw uh, him going back towards so the you're group. You're in a so chair on, on your left. Is this, where you think the, you would go to get to the stairs, although yeah. you haven't made it that far. And if you were to go to your right, you would head back to where your friends were. I'm gonna hop to the left just to see what's down that hall. <clears throat> okay, you um, stroll over uh, this uh, about four or five minutes after you saw uh, Aroha with a woman, and you see these two guards standing at the bottom of a pretty slender set of stairs that lead up. Uh, to some sort of, you can just make out the edge of a hallway up high. Um, but as you get there, excuse me, you see Aroha again, and he's not alone. He is uh, coming down the stairs with a tall man with a purple and green and gold mask uh, with um, a darker brown skin. And uh, as they get there, he is, um, Aroha is tugging off his uh, glove as he comes and uh, offers his uh, hand to that man and they shake and uh, they both come down the stairs, first this stranger to you and then Aroha after him. Make a read roll. Yes. For a mixed success, I'm going to deem it that you realize that you are looking at a man with Aroha who bears a striking resemblance to Malcolm Trills. Uh, oh, wow. The failure shit. of it is that it is the brother of Malcolm Trills. Oh shit! It's and they come down the stairs. It's the, it's the, it's well, I wouldn't. Yeah, that's if it's the baby brother, I would have no. Yeah, that would no, work. Uh, older, it's, it's, oh, it's fucking. It's oh, okay, it's Desmond. All right, it's been a while. And they walk uh, together past your position. Uh, you guys finally see Aroha now turning the corner. You see your brother. You are holding champagne, and he uh, comes around the corner, smiling, and then. I want to make sure Aroha I'm, sees me, and I do a little green, another green. But I'm, I've wanted to, I'm away from the group at this point. Okay. I want to appear like I'm away, alone. Okay. And I want to do another little green puff and hope that he cares. Uh, make a sway roll. <laughs> in the back, in the, I've come round the back to try and just. I'm gonna burn a drive mm -hmm. for that. Just come back. And you oh see, goodness. you see the intersection from behind and then go back to where you came from? I see that I was gonna try and 
warm head this off and it happens too fucking good. late. Right. Shit. That's a five on the floor. That's a five. Five on the floor. floor. On the floor I burned baby. a drive. So. Uh, that's a good speakeasy. Yeah. Uh, for a new five, on five, five on the floor. Five on the floor. Five on the floor. Um, <laughs> to get his attention. Yeah. Um, okay, so yes, uh, he actually starts to <laughs> uh, cough and look over uh, at the group. Um, it distracts your brother, uh, who also looks over and sees a bit of casual familiarity, maybe, between you and the people you're around. Like, you know, in this moment, don't seem quite like a server to him. Uh -oh. And he beelines uh, away and heads down the stairs with purpose. Um, who does Leo, his brother? Brother. Aroha turns back, not, he did not know sharply as I just did, he turns back and sees his client stalking away, and uh, he looks at you. Can I, as I pass him, can I whisper, I know how to unlock it. I know how to unlock it? What's the goal here so I can know how to <laughs> I judge? I wanna him. get in that fucking room. I know how to unlock, unlock it. it. And then I show, and if he looks interested. I've painted. This needs a new sway roll. That's fine. Oh, man. Well, then I won't tell you what's in my hand. Okay. But I'm going to burn another drive. Because <laughs> it seems secrets worth it. Um, five. Oh, five. Watch All right. I still have to understand where you're going with this. Okay. So, so if he looks interested, yeah. I've on, my, on the palms of my hand, I've painted that... Um, figure that you uh, described. That was on the chest. That was on the chest. The key to lock the box that the bones were in. I'm assuming that these bones are in a similar box. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And I sort of, if he wants to see it. So you are, let's be perfectly clear. Yes, it's a risky thing. You are outing yourself to him as someone who has seen his forbidden goodies. Can I, can yeah, I think I'm outing myself as someone like who the, might. You are the person, the only way for unless, unless you to know magic. this design means you saw the box that he sold to initially. So this is you. I'm, I'm gonna let it happen if that's what you want to happen, sure. but this is you going, hey, I'm the person you duped initially. No, that's not that's what I'm Because that's what he would see. Oh, well might then I, no. Might I, might I say something? That sucks, I was trying to do something cool and might not. I, might I say something though? Yeah. This, this actually might be able to work if you utilize your gift, which is Yeah, I wanted spirits. him to think I was like a cool medium. But he doesn't know your power yet. Does he know what, does he know what Grimoria, Grimoria does? No, okay, he so barely that, gives two shits about her employers. Right, right. Okay, so he doesn't like, he does not like the fogs, we know this, right? Sure. So he's gonna think you're automatically escaping. Uh, I'll roll with anything, I just want. No, 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 but if he's gonna think To have that, us have the same Mind Palace share. No, I just like I, I I want to like be get in, and I don't know another way to get in, and so it's kind of like a Hail Mary pass. He hates this idea, but we don't have to go through. We don't have to go with I, it. I, I will roll with anything that happens. I would say you give in to your mysticism, and I'd say you enthrall him with what you can do, and that you have a feeling, and I think you should. I think you should give in to your ability, and I think you should. You should sell the man with your ability. I mean, I, it would be a risk. I'm, well, behi I'm behind you right now, well, and I can, I can, I can assist with this when it comes time. So it, it's okay. So or, I'm, no. if I'm the same size as my brother, slip that full of Mickey, <sighs> and I grab his mask, yeah. and I go in place of my brother. I'm just trying to figure out a way in, whatever the best way is. But because right now we're all kind of like, how do we get in? I mean, my brother, my brother has a the mask. They'll be paying attention to the mask. They won't pay, pay attention to my suit. Right. If we could slip him something that would knock him out, I could take his mask. I'm, I'm gonna drop a pebble no, no. in the stream okay. here because I was a half a tick away from saying it in the first place. Right. And then you make your call. Okay. Because uh, the stream could go in 50 different directions. Yeah. Um, with you where you were at the rear of the group with eyes on the stairs um, and Aroha seeing Trill's head down the stairs, and he looks to you, and you've done your green smoke moment. Mm -hmm. um, a person in a black suit with gold tie and black mask is making their way through the crowd quietly. Okay. Uh, and just 
totally avoids you guys, to, you know, doesn't interact with you at all. Gets to the bottom of these stairs, which you, you still have eyes on, only you, and um, leans in close to one of the two uh, men at the bottom of these steps and whispers and uh, starts to pull him away. Uh, and then uh, he motions for the woman to come as well, and she shakes her head, no, and he goes back and, or he uh, spots the secretary and grabs her by the arm and plants her. The secretary is there and he, these three start trotting off, not trotting because we're in a party, but start quick walking back out and start to wade through. Back towards us? Yes. Oh, they could be transporting okay. it. So okay. there is a secretary at the bottom of these stairs mm -hmm. and three of these presumably red hand security moving through the party, kind of passing you right now as Aroha is is there. And I only say that because I don't... Oh, okay, no, I'm going to change. Don't want you to, I'm I, I change hate the idea, idea of thinking like slapping down a moment. I just I no. wanted to make sure you understand. No, if that's the case, if he's not going to buy it, then I'm going to say, I know how to unlock your box. And then he can just take that as a sexual innuendo and we can move past okay. it. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't want to out the group. I just wanted to get into the room. But if that's not gonna, if if he's too smart to like fall into like he believes in magic, then the guy that's is, not he it. magic though because yeah. he has a magical property, so he does he, believe in magic. Right, he but is if a, he's gonna a, a this world's version of a criminal mastermind. Yeah. Right. Okay. So then I just will say that weird sexual innuendo and keep it moving. Okay. So that reaction that he gets is, and then I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> through your mystical smudged makeup yeah, and, and your spooky vibe. Yeah, and crazy and go. I might just go for a Hail Mary here then. Yeah, So we'll it. get together and let's okay, just yeah, go. To the he, he shakes this off, doesn't know <laughs> what it is. Let's hope and, so. And, and heads off after runaway brother, um, yeah. and he even sees guards running, so now he's going with triple purpose. Great. I'm running running back away. over to, I still think, Leo's our best chance in getting through that door. I'm standing waving. To the group? To the to the group, because I'm yeah. the doors oh, in this letting direction. them know that it is eased up a bit. Yes. Okay, okay. great. So we follow. All right, we gotta follow. I mean yeah. okay. But can I say one thing before we do that though? Yes. Those three people, so they if you're if you're gonna have that extremely if you're gonna have that artifact, it's gonna need security. It's like, you know, if you right, give someone right. like if you I mean if you when you lend out like a, a necklace that's worth millions and you have an actress wear it. Too. They have, they have, you know, they, it's a company for, for security, sure. right? So if they're gonna have the security guard the door, that means it's definitely not behind the door yet. And that mm -hmm. is 10 it's minutes for the uh, what's upstairs, but it looks like they're gonna go, it's upstairs. It's, it the, they, the guards upstairs. are at the base of the stairs. We have to go upstairs, upstairs. in order to find yeah, the room. This, so is, this is just the first hurdle. It's like, if you've forgotten what it is to have money, come on, let's just give this a vote. All right, well then, oh boy, I think you work your magic. Okay. And a reminder that Malcolm is dressed as a waiter right now. Yeah. I know, so and I'm dressed as like this. So that's the package. Yeah, it's Make your choices, but I'm just reminding you of the Mind Palace. I need to hang back a minute, and let's see. We'll go, I'll, I'll accompany Leo. Zora will come. I am going to actually, um, I think I'll have to get a little bit of air, and um, All right. I will just watch the aftermath and deal with what I can in All the right. ways that I can. Leo and I will go. Okay. If we when we get past, we can give the signal. You, the, you two dressed as you are. I have to go downstairs and sell my busts. I have. That's, that's valid. The auction is taken care of by staff in this building. Oh great! Everything on the second floor was so that people would be like, I like oh, that. Okay, I think okay, I want to get. I get to see job. it from five feet away. Okay. So that okay. when I see it from fifty feet away, I'm like, I want that oh, one. Oh perfect. So maybe maybe the best thing for us to do is have a costume change, I which we say, planned for. Yes. Find a costume yes. change. Yes. That would be the thing to do. I would definitely I would definitely change costumes. Great. Like, uh, but now now did has did a Leo did Leo sneak me in an outfit or something or like because he said he's also going to have. Uh, you had talked about a you spare, it, but I will say that bag. Zora yeah. okay, cool. just pulls you off to the side and pulls her mask off. Great. And she offers and it I, to And you. I'll just take this off and presumably have something suitable underneath, underneath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that would fit the, the costume of the day. She Great. also sort of unpins this uh, 
sort of raven feathered uh, display that she has, and she um, does her best to fasten it. Great. Uh, up top. Great. And the mask, I'm assuming, covers the makeup. Yes, so and it's not looks... a perfect look at all. No, but, but it's But you enough. no longer look like um, Great. a spooky mystic. Um, I'm ready. I'm gonna go back to my bag that I packed uh, sure. and retrieve, regular retrieve my garb. That uh, that uh, that. You'll look a little okay. underdressed, but. I ding, can help with ding, that. Ding. If anyone asks your muscle, you know the actual name to use. Three minutes. I cannot believe we're doing this. Three and minutes. I'm heading heading towards the back door. Um, I grab a champagne. I guess I'll just wait in the ma- wait. You can you come know. out if you're if you're if I'm you're dressed, good. We can I'll grab up. the champagne. I'll let I'll let you know that I'll let them know you're. Malcolm, coming. you are doing a booking it, book it and throwing on your clothes and coming back here in three minutes. Yep. Okay. So you guys are waiting. Malcolm disappears with a full, well, a half tray of uh, champagne. You make it just as you hear, ding, 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 ding. And now it is time for us to bid in the Gardens of Delight. And you hear all the people, uh, what few people were left are realizing that they're those people at the theater who waited forever at the bar and then they try to run in at the last second to get their seats. (laughs) All those few people, only like one or two or three, there's someone on the balcony, two people on the balcony who are not interested in the auction and there's very few people. You guys are almost alone and Malcolm comes running up, definitely underdressed, but no longer dressed as a waiter. Great. So. And you still have your mask. Gotcha. I was going to come up with this Montley crew and I was just going to move with mm, r- rich entitlement towards, okay. angry rich entitlement towards the door. Towards this woman uh, in the carnival mask with her uh, clipboard. Yes. And just marching up to her. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the party is not beyond this point. I'm well aware. There should be a Steedwell on that list there should be a steed well on that list. Uh, oh, one moment. She starts to <sighs> go through. And you, and, and. If it helps, it's probably alphabetical. Okay, first name? It's, my God, Raymond Jr., for fuck's sakes. It might be under Leonard, if I must. Sometimes they use the middle name. Okay. All right, and and now what happens? I was supposed to take a look at the merchandise. I have my experts, I have my personal security. I was supposed to go up and have a look at it, and instead I have been getting a run around. I, I don't think that's how this is supposed to work. I could be confused. Do you? you might be confused. You could be confused all the way to three, four floors down. What sort of job do you think you could have at some point? Make a mm. sway roll, and Leo, this is high stakes. Mm-hmm. I'll help. Okay. Uh, How? I will help by... Um, Use a master. I will help by um, saying... Uh, yeah, uh... I, I will help by racking my brain for another really high value artifact, you know, and just use my knowledge and sort of try to confuse her by saying, ma'am, you have to understand, this is da da da, and you know, he's acquired through me this and this and that. Just like blow her head up with like garbage. Okay, so you uh, pump up his knowledge and place in the world place of antiquity. Of antiquity, dealer. using mm-hmm. my knowledge of the antiquities. I will also, I will also let it drive. Okay. Uh, and I will mutter, or, or I will um, convey the fact that his father will be extremely pissed off if we don't secure the item. And, uh, and you know, other than that. Yeah, that you is, drop a comment yeah, off the, the side about off how the side about. this is gonna blow up. Yeah, and then right. that. And how, many, just, how many dice? I'm good, I'm good. You, you have six? I'm at six. Okay. I'm also, just I'll to have it. a moment before I go this, I'm sorry, I'm just having one of those days. Families can be so pressure. I'm sure you understand what it's like to have inappropriate pressure put upon you. It's a sway, it's a sway roll, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's definitely a candela yes. in there. Yes! That was deep, I rolled, I burned everything for that. You see 
the gears in this woman's eyes turn for five seconds straight. Uh, you're not being direct and just sort of waiting. You are trying to look officious and snotty in the way that only wealthy people can be. And although I can't add to drives to that role, I take my pocket watch out, look at it, and just... <laughs> Push it over the edge. Doctor, like Corey, um, great acting. She looks super unsure, but the the talk about uh, loss of placement shook her, mm. and she said, "Well, all right, I will have Mister Tamakai join you when he returns." We shouldn't be long. It's just up the hall. Um, uh, I'll be here. Thank you. For your trouble, I just popped 200, 200 in, uh, in her hand. Uh, and she uh, moves and uh, walks over to one of the golden uh, metal trees that has fallen over and starts to prop it up. And then she just sort of starts to like look way into the party, potentially for her boss. But there is no one on these stairs right now. Fab. And you guys start to climb the stairs. Okay. Nice. It's been a day. You walk up uh, this thin staircase up 20 steps and um, you see a long hallway before you uh, with sort of gold pattern nouveau all along the floor. And there's stained glass windows down the right side of this hallway. Um, and you can see, you walk 10 feet and the light is just as sort of intimate and um, pink or red tinged in here as well. And you, you, something feels off to you immediately. Mm. You see sort of a curtain billowing, just one. Uh, like not, when I say curtain, I mean like thin and gauzy. Yeah, yeah. And they're all along the hallway, but it's just blowing as if there is a lot of wind hitting it. And there's a doorway all the way down across from it, almost exactly, but not you know a little bit off. A doorway open into the hall. Um, we need to do this quickly. Yes, we do. Who's got the quartz? I have it. Okay. The little piece of clay. Or the, with the chip yeah, of quartz the chip in it. Of quartz. Yeah. I have it. Great. Okay. So we keep walking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes open. Look for anything. Anything at all. We <clears throat> move uh, slowly down this hallway towards this billowing uh, bit of gauzy curtain there, and you are about five or six feet away from the door, and you hear <laughs> from around the corner. We're not seeing green light, are we? No. You said no? No. Uh, do I hear anything in my newfound Auditory. I haven't mentioned that constantly, but it is sort of like a background. Yes, noise. of course. Is there Almost anything like specific? A spiritual tinnitus. Yes. Uh, no, no, okay. it is not your sort of eavesdropping tool. It is okay. just. Yeah, it's just background noise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I guess we follow the noise. Is it my turn or is it someone else's turn? I can go. No, you look like shit. And I'm going to gently open the door. Oh, doors. And, oh, I'm sorry, oh. doors open. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. Okay, it's, I'm just gonna gently make my way in, looking left, right, up, down. Okay, well, immediately upon entry on the floor, you see a man uh, in a black suit and gold tie, except the gold tie is smeared with blood and there is like a gaping oh, well shit. in the man's chest. Uh, his gold gloves were splayed out to the side. You have one second to let that register, and you look up and you see two, uh, you believe, men wearing fox masks in full suits, and uh, one of them is just staring intently as another one is holding a long sword in their hand, and the sword has a pale blue sheen to it, and he is pressing the blade through what looks like a bolt on a metallic band holding a familiar looking chest to a dais in here. Uh, there is already another band with a, a lock on it that you see has been burned through, almost as if, if someone had used a welding tool to cut it, and this blade is going and it breaks. And in that second they look up and see you, 
Just two, it's almost like a shining moment. Just two fox masks go like this. <laughs> and one of them grabs That's the case the and they just pivot away from you and run to the rear of this chamber where, and there are objects on shelves all around here and things on pedestals. And the gold box a second ago was in the center of this room, but now it is being run towards a stained glass window as these two men leap through the window and skitter out onto a wet roof and go running away from you. Okay, uh, can we peer down the window? How far is the fall? They, they It's not a fall, it, it is like two feet down. Okay. They are already 30 feet away from you and they are sliding down a sloped uh, bit of roof down to, you guys are on the third floor. They slide down roof and hit what is likely the second floor and begin running along the top of this building. I'm giving chase immediately. Okay, Malcolm's out the window. Uh, I don't know what else to do. Oh God. <sighs> mm, I, I try and safety dive down. <laughs> <laughs> As everyone, yeah, that's true. So they are have got a good lead on you because you guys just stood shell shocked as they yeah. started to book it. Everybody, make a move roll for me. It's going to account for uh, a couple little dips and turns here as you start to slide down the roof. Kendall. <laughs> Five. Gilded. Four. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Four. Okay. Four. Four. You got a, I'm sorry, Gamari? Four. Yeah, five. Oh, wow. Um, oh, baby, you're getting trippy. I know it. All of you guys uh, start to slide down at different paces, Malcolm in the lead, and you realize quickly that you are sliding down stained glass as well. Oh. You couldn't oh. tell in the darkness up here. Somehow, uh, you, Edgar, managed to um, go down through the, the um, the seam between two windows, through no skill or intention, you just, just lucked luck. out. But the rest of you start sliding oh, down and then shit. feel it break under you to a degree. Um, it is not a fall into a chamber, it is glass over a solid roof, oh, but God. it is enough to start to cut into you and the, all of you who got a mixed success take one body mm. as you cut yourselves on the slide oh, down. Shit. You pick yourself up, um, wincing in pain at la lacerations. I probably have many layers of petticoats, just to be clear. <laughs> and they've just been cut <laughs> to through. Shred. Body, body, body. Look at the green eyes. I know, I know. I am a librarian. So Edgar almost runs past you, Malcolm, because you like slide up and get onto your feet and go and then turn because they're not with you right away. They jump up and you guys start booking it. You see these two masked figures um, go from this roof to an adjoining building. Good um, you guys run after them. It's two feet. I'm not going to make you roll, but they're still ahead of you and you see them hit a, uh, a ringed over metal fire escape ladder and they both disappear from view, view and start to go down. Uh, you run and get up to the side of the building and you see um, them just as they get to the sidewalk below and two mask faces look up at you and then they start to run up the road towards the Shrive Line. You can see the glow of this blade on a man's back in modern day New Fair, running up like he's some knight out of the, uh, the 1200s. We're still going, right? Yeah. How far away are they? <sighs> They're probably halfway up the block while you are still at the top of the building. So I can't too far away for me to shoot with my gun, huh? Yeah. Uh, you can also see some people in the periphery here. You're not at the front of the building, at the entrance, any of that. You're on the side on a side street right now. Yeah. But you still see a few people, and a couple of people like catch them as they run by, but then just shake it off. They are near a costume party, and they just keep walking. I don't away. want to give any chase. If I fire my gun, it's gonna bro just gonna draw attention. Yeah. And it might draw unnoticeable attention. Seems plausible. Let me go ahead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to chase. And I'm okay. gonna try. I'm gonna try to continue to chase until I see a. Okay, watch get continue to chase. I'm gonna see what I, what I, what what that yeah, leads I'm, me to. Okay. I'm, I'm not, no, running no, as hard as I can to catch up with them because I have a an idea. Chase the danger, baby. So, Malcolm is the first one to uh, hits the railing and you just barely even take the steps. You do a lot of sliding down, the rest of the party follows after you hit the bottom and you can see them, they've already crossed the street onto the next block and you start running. You guys run through this side street, uh, through the varnish and you can just f start to understand their trajectory. They are headed for the Shrive Line. 
Um, and you know, the city is not segmented into like, this is this box and this is mm -hmm. this, but one neighborhood gives way to another and you start on the, the next block that you cross, you already pass what looks like some sort of like um, small um, seminary building and realize that you're starting to get into that bleed over between the neighborhoods. You give chase as fast as you can, huffing down the block. If they hadn't gotten such a good start, if you hadn't raked yourselves down stained glass, you might have been right behind them. But instead, they have got about a block, block and a half lead, and you Damn. see them uh, running towards a, uh, a fenced-in area, large open field. And as you're running, Leo, you're at the back of this group as they, they run as fast as they can. Um, but you are, it, is, it is slowly starting to dawn on you where you are going. Uh, no. Right now they are running towards... Uh, that's right. What? They are running towards the Sacred Ascension Ther uh, Cemetery. Oh. Uh, and um, they blow past a gate entrance as they go in. You kind of lose sight of them because it is way darker in there. It's somewhat lit on the city streets at this hour. Um, there's not as much light in, say, a modern day New York City, but there's some. But as soon as you get to the cemetery, that's lights out, baby. And they are in. Is there, is there, is there, is there anything, is there, is there, is there a, a moped or, 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 or a, a, a motorcycle I can, like, jack? A, a, yeah. a jack? Bicycle. Like, like, Bicycle. Uh, well, procure or steal. Oh, is there, I thought is, you said, is there a jack as a noun? No. You had me with moped, bicycle. Um, is there like a motorized? There, there are not those in this world. Where they're going, it's not going to help. Um, and they're already, Where are we going? when you say that, when you're asking that, they have already, I literally just said they had bust through a gate and were in a cemetery. Okay. So they are disappearing from view rapidly. And as you guys get closer yourselves, you start to see um, uh, there are um, uh, pins uh, attached all along this fence. Mm. Um, pins? Yeah. Yes, it is a it is a new fair custom that has to do with oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yes that's right. Um, you run in and this is a you know this because you were here a long time ago yes for a very special night yes and it is a large sloping cemetery that goes on for like three or four city blocks Jeez. the equivalent of which and it's sort of hills and valleys through and they are definitely heading on an angle that you know. You know where they are heading. Yes. You give chase, uh, you pass that outer fence. Um, you can just barely make out for the first seconds you're in, glimpses of shadows running in the night, but then you just lose sight of them. However, far in the distance, you three, you see a, a, like a, a, a darkened building, a structure in the distance, with just like a little bit of light peering out of gaps or breaks. You get closer and closer and realize you are looking at a very, old church in the farthest corner of these cemetery grounds. Um, the door, when I say door, like there's breaks in the walls in this place. There's like holes in the roof. There's bits of scaffolding on the outside of this. This place is a relic of the past. It is not a church that is in use. It is more sort of like- Like um, ruins? It is, it is ruins. There is, a, there is definitely walls and roof, but it, it clearly is not a place where services are given to the mother uh, anymore, not in this day and age. You can see a little bit of like lit stone, so clearly there are people in here or there are light sources in here, but if they're in there, they're in there. And you guys are now catching your breath, standing amongst a bunch of gravestones, which if you squint at, you can, I mean, it's dark, but they're also the ones that are closest to you. These are so old that the, the names are mostly worn away with time, probably centuries old. I'm not talking old fair, but like founding of the city, mm -hmm. the modern mm -hmm. city. 200 years old, 300 years old, some of them. Have the, have the people in the fox, fox maths made it into the church yet? Because if well, they haven't, I am booking in that them. direction. You lost sight of them uh, about a minute ago, and you're going on assumptions now. You don't I'm, see them. I'm going in the fastest direction. If there's a shortcut, I would know it, and I'm heading that way. Okay, so you are running to the, the, the fastest way in is the front door. And when I say front door, obviously it's a huge church's arch, but the there is no, the wood, wooden doors that must have been there at one time are just not there. It is open to the world. Mm. So you're rushing in. Or can I see them? 
Uh, as you run up, you see... Uh, yes, you see one man moving around towards the rear, uh, dragging uh, some sort of like a, a, a drape or a blanket out, and then you just see somebody cross your view, and you catch a glimpse of that blade glowing and then disappear as he moves about inside. I stop directly at the fucking line of that door. Outside it? Yep. Okay. Well, I, I wouldn't know any better, so I'd probably run into you because I think we should keep going. I will grab you. Okay. Well, let's hold on for a second. Yeah, and I will pull away from that door. Oh, here we go. Leo, feet from the door of this church. You catch yourself rigid, half of you wanting to stride in, and half of you paralyzed. Because you have come back. You've come back, Leo. It's been 23 years, but you are here. The place where you rift your life up into tatters. The moment the Dawn Society went dark forever. Along with any normal life you might have had. It's just how you remember it. Though I know you wish you didn't. You can see through the gap seconds before these people notice your presence silhouetted in the door here. Another very important doorway off to the side, leading into that room where you and your friends drew a circle on the ground, where you set down that clock. You wound that infernal clock. What happened here, Leonard? What did you fucking do? We wound, we, I, 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 I wound the clock. It was, it was, uh, uh, we wound it. I sat in the, in the circle. It, it, it ticked and ticked and we waited. It was going to be a game, it was a game. It was just a stupid, stupid game, and the lights went out, and then, and then it, do you hear that? It, then it, uh, um, it's, it's so hard to Can think with it. Screaming, Leo. It, 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 it ticked. Those and teenagers. Ticked and ticked and ticked and ticked. And Your friends. There was something in the, in the dark, and I was so, so, so scared. Where's your sister? I, I heard, I heard her scream. I heard her scream and run, and then I heard, uh, I, I, it, 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 it shouldn't have been a scream, whatever it was, it was too, it was too much, and I watched, I, I watched, the other two who stayed, I stayed, they just stopped. They, whatever they saw, they just stopped. Their bodies just broke and cracked, and then I broke, and then, and then, and then, it just, it's, 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 can you hear that? Can anybody hear that? It's, ah, uh, it. You're all alone in this moment, Leonard. There, there were eyes. There were eyes. And each, each, with each tick, they got closer and they found the others and they chased the others 
And it wasn't, it wasn't, it's tick, 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 tick. It just, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't. It would just find time just bent. And I was so, I was so scared and I woke up and uh, the world was different. I don't, I woke up and I don't know what I, I don't want to, they were dead. They were all, I don't know why I'm not dead. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm not dead. It's just, it's still in, it, it's still. I, okay, please make it stop. Can you just please make it stop? Everyone loves a party, Leonard. All of you come crashing back in behind Leo in the doorway and four people inside of this church turn and spot you. Two are ready. They are wielding these shimmering blades in the dark lighting in this church. And a priest, modern day, except his shirt is split open and he has vestments hanging down as if standing in front of the altar of the church with a, a shroud placed over it. And his arm is reached out to one man who is holding this golden box and the priest at the altar yells, heretics, do not wait. And one of the men with the sword says, you shouldn't be on this hollow ground. You will leave this place. And a third man steps forward with this golden chest and his hand reaches around to the front and he says this church will be cleansed by the flint and the flame into the pit with you and his hand turns and clicks that disc on the front oh shit and a high pitched keening sound begins to wind up quickly on your three o'clock and a streak of green-hued light arcs out from a break in the wall on the right, quick and precise. Now, stay with me here because this next bit happens in seconds. That energy strikes the man holding the chest and before your eyes, his entire body is enveloped in that sickly green color that you know so well now. And in seconds, his body, his whole body is starting to disappear. Simultaneously, a man in a black suit with no mask is stepping over stone into the church. As he does, he is lowering his hand, which is sheathed in some sort of thick partial leather gauntlet. This thick glove has a few coiled wires running up to the elbow, and the forearm has some sort of short brass cylinder that clearly has alchemical sigilry carved into it. And the masked man's body holding uh, this golden chest begins to um, blow away in a soft green tinged mist as the golden chest, we're still one and a half seconds in, begins to fall to the ground. It strikes the stone floor, popping open as a skull, burning green bounces across the stone floor, rolling faster than you can react and comes to a rest just against the tip of your toe. Oh, Grimoria. You feel the gnaw of bleed in the air and an eruption of billowing light envelops you where you stand. Everyone sees Grimoria's body go rigid, her head thrown back, and she lifts an inch or so off the ground, held there. You take a brain, you take a bleed, Malcolm and Edgar, in addition to seeing your friend pinned in the air like a butterfly, you also now see a shadow hovering above the golden chest, wavering for a second where that man has stood, and then it evaporates like smoke. The man on the ground with no mask yells, Packages in play! Secure it! Another high-pitched whine and a streak of green arcs down from a high point in the ceiling. A hole in the roof where a bit of scaffolding is visible. Another streak of green streaks down. The man behind the altar, the older man, the priest, obliterated. Another shadow just hovering 
and wafts away. These new arrivals are carrying themselves like military. Meanwhile, three seconds later, four seconds later, five seconds later, your vision doubles. The color and definition of the church fades from your eyes as another reality comes closer to clarity. You see your own hands. You are high on a hill at the top of winding white stone stairs, holding a staff in one hand. You can still see the church and Edgar on your right, but they're clear ghosts of themselves as cypress trees come more into clarity, swaying in an ocean breeze. The air feels warm. A group of men cautiously make their way up towards you. They are dressed in armor the likes of which you have only seen in the museum. They speak in a language that is unknown to you, and yet you inherently know its meaning, as you do. Do not make us spill your blood. Return what was taken. You defy your emperor. A voice answers. Your voice. In language largely forgotten by time. He would destroy us all. His hunger is too great. His wisdom a lie. One of the men strides forward, weapon in hand. This witch knows only defiance. We take it now. But your hand streaks out and claws the air. The man's body is pulled from the step and thrown viciously into a boulder on the hill. But then they are all closing in on you. You feel the point of a spear thrust into your ribs at your heart. Better I die here than allow the mad emperor one more drop of power. You rip the spear from your chest, then break the staff over your knee, and the hillside and everything on it glows a white hot light and is gone. All of you see a woman hovering in the air, wreathed in a spectral haze, wafting inches off of the stone floor. Her hair is long and white and undulates around a deeply tanned face. She wears rough-hewn robes of blue and white pattern. Atia Griffia, return from old. And now we are in it. One, two men armed with strange weaponry in the roof and at the side. There are two of these men, pyre agents. You know this because before the priest at the altar was obliterated, you saw a tattoo you've seen in your past, a tattoo of a sword of this sect, a hidden sect of the church whose mission it is to assume Magic, heretical magic, to wipe magic out. Wrangle with the curse to destroy it for good. Or so the cell believes. What do you do? <laughs> Things are moving fast. The, um, the way those people are disappearing. Does it look the same? It looks faster and more precise. The day your sister was obliterated behind your back. You turned in time to see her passing, fading, and blowing away. That's been a mystery for 18 years. The sound you just heard two times in a row is like a condensed, precise version 
of what has haunted you for 18 years. What's the connection? You'll have to figure that out because there is a man whipping around now, holding his hand out and seeing you all and turning his head quick between these two knights of pyre and the strangers rolling in. He begins uh, to walk towards the chest on the ground and he twists the cylinder on his arm and you watch as green energy sort of slides out of the chest and wafts to that cylinder and then sucks inside of it and you hear what do you do oh my god one of the knights runs towards that man on the ground and begins to swing his sword as that guy is uh, finishing up his power up i am going to duck for cover at this is is a guy who's uh, is a guy who's going with the sword is he trying to kill the guy with the cylinder he looks to... like so it could be a mix of the box. could be a mix of red hand though let me yeah let me clarify a few things for you because any of you could be disintegrated in a moment here. right there is a pulsating green skull just beneath Grimoria yeah. Atia which we don't know. You have agency here as well. Yeah. The box is open and on its side, and you can see multiple bones in there. They look like rods of uranium strapped in in velvet uh, grooves inside the box, and they are just wafting green. Uh, but the oh. box is on its side, and they mercifully have stayed clipped in place. Only the skull has rattled out. How How... How close and how far, okay, this changes things. How close and, uh, is, is this little run? She's 10 feet in front of you. Okay. Hovering in six inches off the ground. Okay. You are as conscious as they are. Yes, I, I, You have overlapped consciousness yeah. right now. I would like to, uh, if I can, talk to Atia. Yes. Okay. Um, I understand everything that m- maybe her last moments were and I feel very deeply for her. And I want to ask her, how can I help you? I I want to release you. How can I do that? She doesn't reply like a conversation. but in language from long ago. A phrase bubbles up through the communication gap. End his legacy. Um, And then I, I try to say, the only, the only way that I can think of doing that is to take your remains and give them a resting place in a safe place. Because as you can see, people want to use it. This conversation is happening in a grain of sand of time. They are slowly moving around you. I just, I want- to commune. Yes, I want to relay to her that like, she's safe with us and we, we don't want to use her power for anything but to give her a resting place. You're hovering in the air and you can feel your toes sort of wafting there. She doesn't reply with words of the era or of her own. Instead, you feel power surge through your chest, through your arms. You are more than you are in this moment. Tasty. The pyre agent shoves a sword into the gut of this man who cries out in pain and palms the head of this assailant. And you watch as the head just and 
blasts backward in instant mist. For a split second, you see globules of red mixed with green, and then it is just mist. And a shadow in the form of this former religious zealot hovers and then blows towards the door through you, out the door into nothingness. A man above looks down and sees the lot of you and doesn't know what to make of you and aims his hand and fires. Atia, I need you to make a move roll. Um, I would like to add a drive to that. Yeah. Because um, I want to shoot him as he does that. Okay. So that would be my distraction if I can do that. Okay. Yes, we will resolve the move first. We'll definitely okay. say the gun goes off and okay. the guy jerks just just perceptibly enough. Candela. Candela. Um, I love it. Malcolm uh, sees that man above aiming his hand down at your friend transformed. You see it in a split second, Malcolm, and you draw, quick draw up and then shoot and uh, the bullet goes. It startles him enough that the energy goes wide and scorches along the ground and you see the stone go and there is like a six inch deep groove, a messy groove in the ground. Now we'll resolve, take your shot. I'm gonna use sharpshooter on it. That's two, that's three die then, right? Yeah. Plus my two move, plus my two, uh, plus my control, so that's three die. Okay. Okay. Do you, do you feel like you need help here, or are you? Ah. Uh, no. Okay. I think three die should be good. I'm going for the man on the floor that got stabbed. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Man, you are fucking candela? lucky to How take. many? One candela. One candela. <laughs> Six is great. Um. His shot scorches the stone floor. Uh, Atia also shifts in the air a good three or four inches to the side, just getting missed. The bullet, gun goes off, bullet flies, and it flies straight through the man's eye, out the back of his head. And he just stands there, the hand flex for a second. And his face just goes blank, and he crashes down into the scaffolding he's on and rolls off and you watch as his body falls three three stories <laughs> and hits the ground and splatters head broken open like a melon uh, so who do we have left where's the, where's the box the, where's the clock where's the clock Where's the clock? I, th I, I, it was in here, wasn't it, or was it not in here? You think you might hear the clock? I definitely know. I do. You hear remember the, clock. the room? I do. Is there a clear shot to it, or no? You can try. Certainly. <laughs> <clears throat> Who's in my way? Yeah. Currently, there's no one in your path. There is a Tia hovering above the skull. Keep in mind, we are going in slow motion beats here, because right. I want okay. you guys to live, I swear. Um, you <laughs> I start running towards well, the I'm door. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull off my mask, Yes. and I'm gonna try and use it to shove the skull towards the box. Just the like box? a fucking... Oh, is the box too far away from the, that? Oh, the, the chest. Your chest. We're chest. talking about the chest. Yeah, at the moment. Thank you. I thought you were talking about. Oh, I was curious if I could hear it and if it's visible. It has not, it has stopped for them. It has not stopped for you. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, you want to get to the chest? If it's, it depends on how close it is. Uh, from you, it is about 20 feet away towards past Atia, past the skull. I'm going to try and use my mask to grab the skull <clears throat> and basically, like, Toss okay. it in that direction. Someone else. Fucking You're tossing your mask to try to hit the skull. Using the skull? No, using the mask to scoop and and like running to by. To scoop the skull and throw. Got it. I forgot to tell you to take a bleed. I did. I yeah, I have a bleed. Another one. I think so. Uh, <laughs> great. Let's make that uh, finesse. A finesse. Well, you're trying. If you were right. just trying to First run to get to a place, I'd say move, but you are trying to use a party mask to scoop up yeah, it's a nice radioactive scoop. skull of a 2,000-year-old sorceress. To toss it in that direction. Yeah. 
to use it like a like a lacrosse thing to a send it towards the skull? Yes, a little bit. Still, With, still finesse. Okay, which still one finesse. is a uh, control. control? Sorry, finesse is in the description. It is. I'm control. so sorry. I always never look. Uh, this is gonna suck. Let's see what happens. Uh, I fuck, see that but guy. it's the lowest, so that's the three. But I'm gonna use the resistance. To, do I reroll one with the resistance? The base. The base. the base. the base roll, okay. So that's just one. Is it one that you have nothing in? Yes. Two, then you would roll two again. Uh, no, same roll exactly. I rolled a three. Uh, God. No. Tried. <clears throat> no candela. Unless anyone wanted to help, but Leo, yeah, no. you are right. so unnerved by the ghost of a Mm -hmm. clockwork you know tick in your mind as you run forward that you misjudge the distance and you go to uh, smack the skull towards its home. Unfortunately, you're about two inches shy and your hand drives the mask into the stone and the mask shatters. And the mask is made of many little pieces of broken glass and your knuckles and hand are lacerated instantly. Uh, you crash just beneath a tia, and you take a body. Uh, your hand now scored and gored along the back. Who else do we have at play in this room? You see, uh, you see Edgar rushing towards a man who is pulling, painfully pulling a blade out of his gut. Um, but you also see uh, an additional man uh, with uh, vestments on um, coming out from behind uh, a corner in the rear of the church. He's another priest. This man has a gun and he is now walking and he is, sees the most obvious target in here is the witch, sure. which is what he screams and he is moving towards you. I wanna get to oh, yeah. Edgar. Because you were running towards the man this guy the pulling the sword out. This is the man with the glove, with the thing, that's yes. making the noise, that's causing the thing. And he has just drawn in energy from the chest. Okay. But he has a, he's pulling a sword out of his stomach. Yes, currently, he was stopped mid-motion. Yeah. You know what? That's not right. I have to rewind, because he just shot the face off yeah. a man. So he is just pulling yeah. the sword out. So I what do you up. do? <coughs> I'm a doctor, I'm here to help. And then I immediately punch him right in the larynx to stop him from speaking, using yeah. my focus. Yes, yes. Sneaky. And I'm gonna use my extra die from my training that I took yes. at the beginning. Yes, all that shadow boxing. In the hospital gym. Shit. Holy shit. That's three ones. I'm gonna burn a resistance. Yes. Wow. That was wild. What's that? What did you use? Uh, what are you using there? I'm using uh, intuition. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It's fine. Is it, it's fine. Let me see if I can. Like, me see if my I base rule is. I don't good. know if you can add to a, to a, to a resistance. Yeah, you can't to my resistance. Right. Oh. Five. On a Five. Five. What a, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just strike out with precision and get him right in the throat and go. <coughs> no, I said I would help, <coughs> but I need you alive because I have questions, <sighs> and you're going to answer them. Bullet goes off for your mixed success. The priest striding what? out, aiming at you, sees his friend suddenly coming under uh, attack, and retrains. Okay and fires. Um, the bullet pierces through your shoulder and spatters the man in front of you with blood. This man who is <laughs> Take your body. Oh, yeah, this is nasty. <laughs> Tell me, sorry for clarification, what was the last thing you said before you got shot? I said, I am going to help you and keep you alive because I have questions. Questions, okay. <coughs> so he's hacking uh, up a bit of blood. You have just been shot. 
you have shot a man. The man who was about to shoot you has just redirected. Um, is there anything? What are you doing? I want to. I want to. I want to point a hand or something and and tell Atia like, like, you don't have to let these men come at you, and see if that um, inspires. If you could do anything here, Amy Carrero as Atia. Griffia, what would you do? I would shoot them. I would shoot out whatever green bleed out of my hand, and uh, kill the man with the gun. Why don't you make a? Why don't you make a sense roll for me? Oh, good. Okay. Candela. Yes. Candela. So here's what happens. Okay. This hidden priest comes out with a gun aimed at you, marching forward at the last second. He turns and shoots your friend yep. through the shoulder, through the back. Uh, you, within your fugue here, ask, what can I do? And you feel that power in you just surge, and yep. you know, and you just strike your hand out. No green energy fires from your arm, but the man instantly, his body, gets hucked backward into the wall behind him and you hear oh. and oh. you watch as his skull sort of flattens a bit and presses into the wall and you start to see blood pour down his eyes into his mouth, out of his mouth and his hands are quivering against the wall just continues to crush and crush into the wall and then peels away and falls in a bloody mass mm. on the ground. The skull is pulsing beneath you. Take a bleed. Uh, that's my fourth bleed. The man crumples to the ground. You feel euphoric like a goddess in this moment. And then, without warning, it starts to leave you, and you both behind her see you're too busy. See that form melt away, and there is Grimoria, young as she is, collapsing down to the ground and hitting the stone where you take a body. Can I say one thing before she yeah. passes out to yeah. Atia? Absolutely. It, which is just, let me help you. That's and then your head strikes stone and you are unconscious. What are you two doing? She's messed up, dude. I have to make sure she's good. Uh, where am I in, where, where am I in conjunction? Your problems left in the room, seemingly, at this moment, are the doctor who has just been shot. <laughs> and there is a man who has been stabbed and punched in the throat. So he's not doing too good either. They are a sorry sight. The skull of Atia Griffia. Bleed, bleed, bleed. Ed Edgar turns around after being shot, holding, just putting pressure on his own wound. Turns and he goes, put the skull in the box and let's leave. And you see, as he's turned, there is what look like glowing fingers pressing oh, into the side shit. of his neck. We are going now. Find a door. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, and, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna rip off my jacket and and try to scoop this skull up and and run it to the box. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do uh, control to grab that thing. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do control on that. So that's one. I'm gonna burn a drive on it. I will burn a drive. Oh, wait, I gotta. Wait a second. Each mark. Oh, wait a second. Oh. I got it. I have. I got a bleed and a body. So that's two more sh more marks that I can fill up in my drive. Tell me that one more time. Okay. So I have adrenaline rush. So mm -hmm. for each mark I take, yeah, I can immediately refresh a drive that's point right. of my choice. So for every mark I've given you in this church, you should have restored a drive. Awesome. So I'm gonna restore two. So I'm gonna burn one. So I'm gonna restore my nerve drives to max after this. Just just yeah. to let you know. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna burn a drive, and I have control, which was. Um, 
What was it? What was it? With control, okay, control. So I have two. That's right. All right. Okay, so we're going just the two for your control. I'm gonna. Oh, I don't want to do that yet. I'm gonna use my. This is serious. I'm gonna use. Oh, I'm, shit, about I'm gonna use my extra die on this. Use it next time. Should have gone to Vegas today. Okay. Candela. It's Candela. <laughs> it's a Candela. It's a Candela. Edgar snaps into your brain. Nod to him and grab your coat and run forward and don't even touch it. You just whip it around under and catch it into a bowling bag, more or less. And you run it over, kick the chest onto its rightful position, mm -hmm. and then just open the jacket and the skull falls awkwardly into the groove inside of this chest that held it before. Mm -hmm. And then I assume kick the lid shut. Yep. Immediately. The box still continues to glow. In the interim, this man behind you who's hacking slowly, more uh, slowly than the first time someone in this room charged up, green has been wafting its way into this thing and he sees now that it has achieved the status that he needs. And Do I... he is going to stretch the hand out towards Malcolm, who's standing over the chest now. And I what do you do? See him moving. You, of course. And see. this church is ruined, correct? There is like I assume there's like dilapidated things. There's like bricks. There's. Yes, mm -hmm. there I are. I immediately s describe a brick. I slam it in his temple. Oh yes. You can make any kind of move I, you want to make. Uh, what what kind of roll are you using, really quickly? Uh, well, I'm aiming for the temple, using no exact where to strike in the head, so I'm using oh, wait, wait, anatomical strike. I, I I an, what, which, what, what is an, anatomical strike you use? Sorry, it's intuition. It's intuition? Yeah. Okay, he said find a door. Yeah. I'm finding the door. Yeah. So I would be walking by this right now. I might be a little distracting for this because I know where there's a door. Okay, and I'm so you're distracting? Accidentally, but I just got up when he said that and I know exactly what door I'm going, just tick, 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 tick. and I'm heading Probably okay. right by this I'll rock. say, I'll, here's what I'll say. Yeah, I know. You knowingly walk in front of Malcolm, mm. risking, but also confusing his shot in the moment. Maybe in that split second, it will give him a hairline of pause. Take the drive. Triple sixes. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. Three, three candelas right there. Wow, you right. had three ones a few minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. See? That's how it works. That's how it works, baby. <laughs> three candelas. I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> mm. He reaches his hand out towards Malcolm. You see that cylinder, all the little line work in it start to glow and wind up, and you hear that sound that you heard 18 years ago and something fucking snaps in your brain, Edgar, and with one hand you slap it down on the glove and rip it off his hand, and with the other you swing that stone clear across his face and you watch as his forehead, nose, and eye socket get ripped out and off, and you can see his teeth exposed as you hold a brick in your hand covered in blood and one fucking tooth in it. The man hits the ground and crawls lamely, pathetically to the center of the room and starts to sink into the stone looking directly into Grimoria's face. You are alone. The case needs to be sealed. Gotta get Grimoria up. She's the only one who knows how to seal the case. I'm hoping you guys remember that I have a book in my pocket yeah. with the sigils <laughs> and the equation. Well, what I, what would we true. know? Will we know how to decipher yes, that? Yes, because you that saw it. True. You I saw it. That is true. Okay. You right. saw it at the, on the ship. Do it. Up. Are you sure? It's true. It's true. I know where he's going. Mm -hmm. 
I go over to her body and I look for the book. Okay. You uh, look through her pockets and you find that leather book with your friend's handwriting. I'll go over to the chest. Try and find the page and try and lock this thing. You find it. You find it. Okay. This is going to take for you, I will say, I will let you choose to use your brain or your spirit, so focus or sense. Focus. Mm -hmm. um, You've spent enough time with Grimoria. Yeah. You watched her do this the last time. You'll remember. You'll remember. Kendall. <laughs> on the ground and in your hand Edgar the strange contraption of a gauntlet a legacy of pain in the palm of your hand what happens now now I find the damn door and I open that shit and I'm gonna freaking throw that box through that door immediately. What, what door? Don't we have the... Well, we, where's the... The courts. The, 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 the courts. The courts. I have it. You have the courts? What's the courts? just need a door. There is a door. You know where the door is. I'm already... I have... I walked away from this. I'm like... I'm so you've gonna, gone the to the minute the that was gone, I'm down that fucking hallway. I believe that. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna run after, since I know he has a cord, so I'm gonna run okay. after, I'm gonna take the box, and I'm gonna run after. You pick up the box, it's heavy. Yep. And Leo's ahead of you. <clears throat> and you walking quick. check it out, you actually open the door before you, they get there, and it's, <sighs> Leo, it's, it's there. It's years later, and it is still there. You can see the intricate carving, the beautiful wood of this strange clockwork device, decorated and, and uh, combined with pieces of stone dug up from the old world, little animals with bits of gem and quartz and stone, thousands of years old. You can hear the bell and the moving parts. You can see the eyes blinking. What do you do with this clock? I find the first figurine as it's moving. And I take it and I just snap its head off. And I put it in my pocket. I take the next one and I rip an arm off, throw it across the room. I just piece by tiny piece, bend and break. I take my bleed detector and I shove it in there and twist. I take my lighter and I pour, pull the kerosene out and I pour it into it. I start hitting it with my broken hand, scraping the glass into it. I will find any way to hurt it as slowly as humanly possible. Can I hear the ticking? It is incessant. Leo, I need you to take two brain. Mouth three. You come up behind Leo and stand in the door. And you see him hunched over like an imp, scraping his broken cut hand against a large stone in the middle of the room. 
punching the stone, pouring kerosene on top of a rock that is part of the foundation of this church. He's whispering to it and rocking back and forth on his heels. I... Leo, what the fuck are you doing? It's just... It can break. Leo, you gotta get your shit together. We have to get this... We have to get the door open now. The the door is open. You need this door to work. Where's the course? You need him out of here so you can affix the sun to the door. I have to get, so can he, he needs to do it then. I have it. You have it. You yeah, all need to be fuck. on one Where are you? side of the door. I'm still back in the room You're with Grimoire. Use it. You took a chest and walked to him. Fuck. So I'm walking over to Grimoire. Edgar, I need you here now. Get here now. I know. I pull out a small knife that I had just hidden in my pocket and I start trying to dig into the fucking gears. I'm just trying to bend them to make the sound Stop, and I am finding the eyes and the lights. He's not moving. He's, he's like, he's locked He's in, in his thing. He's locked in, so that, and I, I can't, my main objective is to get this box through so that I can get them out of danger. You guys need to be on one side of the door or the other. And he's, and in the, he's inside the door? You currently are on, we're, we're making rooms. a magic door, yeah. and you guys are on opposite sides, which is not what you need. All right. So, the man, I can't do like, I passed out. That's right. hit in the head. Quickly look for a wallet. Mm-hmm. And I take it. Okay, you've got it. And then I go pick up Grimoire, yeah? Yeah. And I walk towards the door. Okay. And when I pick her up, I go, hey. You have to stop passing out, Grim. <laughs> and I get up and walk to the door. In my head, I'm going, <laughs> it's, it's not healthy. Uh, you pick her up, you say? Yeah. Um, I, I w- I'm happy to roll for this, because I am fucking no. Your eyes f- flutter awake. You're too weak to move. You are, you are hurting, but you are just barely conscious as Edgar carries you turning to enter this room. All four of you are in here. Why not? Leo, take another brain. I am out. He collapses over the stone. It might be easier, honestly, if he His yeah. head on it like a pillow, and his hand on his own face, scored with blood, and there's just chunks of glass coming out. The other hand is bloody, too, because he's been punching this rock, and he just, with a half-smile, collapses against the stone. But you are all in one room together. Put the chest, put the chest down and get the thing out of my pocket. It's in, inside pocket of my coat. I can't move that arm that well. You gotta put it on the door, and then we open the door. The door has to be closed. We slap that on as hard as you can, and then open the door. I'm gonna do that. Okay. <coughs> it's a piece of clay. It is uh, slightly pliable, do and that. it plants against the door, and you take it away, and you smash it, and it <coughs> flattens out and mars the design of the sun, and there is a visible tremor down through the door, clear like water or waves. And you hear, and you open the door, and you are looking at a set of stairs going down, 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 and twisting ever so slightly. I'm gonna scoop that box up, I'm going down the stairs immediately. Hey, you gotta drag him in too. That's fine, I, I, I'll, uh, for, before I do that, I'm gonna put, make sure Edgar, I mean Edgar, I'm gonna make sure Leo's on the other side of the door, since he can, he's, he has Grimoria. I'm gonna make sure that Leo, before I get the, 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 uh, mm-hmm. the box, I'm going to drag Leo yeah. on the other side of that door, and then I'm going to quickly get the box and, and scream at everyone to get the fuck through the door. Okay, you drag an unconscious Leo Amicus down the first six or seven of these stairs and leave him lying, staring vacant-eyed at a hallway in the fourth pharos. And you return for the chest, and it will be difficult, but we are at the end of our chapter here. You hoist this thing under your arm and move in, and you follow. 
carrying Grimoria. And Grimoria, you just look over her shoulder at a scene in a church that you will never forget. And the door swings closed behind you. The clay goes brittle and falls away in dust. And I'll leave you as you guys slowly, painfully step your way down an impossibly long stairwell into the fourth pharaohs. And that's where we'll end our story for the night. Put us in a welcome party for God's sake. Four f fabulous people sign off for the night. One more time. Ah. Uh, my name's Alex Ward. I do this sometimes. <laughs> I'm on the internet. You'll find it. I'm Amy Carrero, playing Grimoria, the weird medium magician. <laughs> my name is Amari Williams. I am Malcolm Trills. My name is Talison Jaffe. I am. Uh, the remnants of Leo Amicus's parental damage. Uh, and I'm Liam O'Brien, your game master for this chapter with the Circle of the Crimson Mirror. I am utterly terrified before these games start, and then I get to the end, and I've had so much fun with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you and you, and hey, thank you. See you in the fourth Pharaohs. <laughs>